sorry to get wild. How low can you go? Throw our hands in the air. Party Wave people like, like you just, just don't, don't care. care. Oh, gosh. Oh, jeez. Childhood just slipped away. It, it just, song just, is just a, slippery. The songs yeah. sometimes are on, on like the AM radio. You know? Song. AM radio? Who yeah, listens the, to AM radio? What are you, my father? The songs of the uh, of your childhood are now We're on classic on, stations. But that's not on AM. AM's talk radio. Classic rock of the 80s. <laughs> What's the difference between AM and FM radio? I always thought AM was just garbage, trash. No, no, no. FM's AM actually. The fun music. <laughs> <laughs> I think FM only became popularized in the 60s. I could be wrong. I don't mm. think before I think everything was AM before that. Mm. AM is able to go through the atmosphere further, but with uh, less, less power. So, eh. yeah, but it, but it <laughs> spreads. It's just it doesn't. I don't think it has the same capacity to carry as much quality. I think he's just making stuff up. I, well, this is my limited comprehension, mm -hmm. but it does travel further. So it had, mm -hmm. it serves a good purpose, okay. right? It mm -hmm. covers a, a wider area. So, mm -hmm. but then came the mega stations of the seventies, <clears throat> all the <throat> hits Led Zeppelin stairway to heaven. Why number would, one. Why would they create another thing? I don't even understand AM FM. I don't know. I really, there's so much, to, you know what, if there's ever, um, that big solar flare that knocks everything offline. Mm -hmm. I am not the guy who's going to be able to help rebuild things. I'll be the jester. I'll be like, and a shitty one at that, you know, the court jester. Yeah. Telling jokes. and then, your, your jokes are pretty good. Yeah, but they're not good enough to be the top jester, you know? I'd be, I'd be. Um, okay, are you ready? <clears throat> With AM radio, the amplitude or overall strength of the signal is varied to incorporate the sound information. With FM, the frequency or the number of times each second that the current changes direction of the carrier signal is varied. So the frequency of the carrier signal is varied. So FM s signals have a great advantage over AM. So let me say that one more time. So my Amplitude modulation versus frequen <laughs> frequency modulation? Yes. Ah. So the amplitude or overall strength of the signal in AM is varied when FM is the frequency is varied so that's why a m amplitude varied mm -hmm. fm frequency varied mm -hmm. or it'd be modulated is the m modulation i think so it's a nice word the advantages of am radio are that it's relatively easy to detect with simple equipment so you can, okay. that's why you think it goes farther because it's just easier to detect mm -hmm detectorists mm -hmm. um, even if the signal isn't very strong the other advantage is that it has a narrower bandwidth than fm oh. and wider coverage compared to the fm radio okay okay so that's really th there we go well <laughs> it's fantastic information oh our neighbors are going by <gasps> oh she's Walking gonna wonder where legs. roxy is i know so we have a confession i should, I should have kept the blinds closed i know they can't see us <laughs> no, I'm just but kidding. roxy is in doggy daycare. Roxy's no longer with us. Oh, rude. I miss her already. No, today. I mean, she's not with us today. Why would you say it like that, Michael? Jesus. <laughs> um, they tried. They did everything she can, and she'll be fine. Um, no, but we... So we took her to the vet because Roxy is very sensitive, and it turns out I think she's allergic to her food. So we're switching out her food because she's been getting little bumps, and her nose gets red, and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, we took her to the vet, and she, you know, she's a puppy. She gets so excited. She doesn't see a lot of people other than us. And the vet was like, have you put her in like doggy daycare? Or is she like playing with other dogs a lot, like at the dog park? <clears throat> and we were like, no, she plays with us. Anyway, she was like, well, you might want to consider putting her in doggy daycare just a few times, you know, like three times a month or so to kind of socialize her. And then we were, I, I didn't even think about that. And so when we came home, I was like, oh, my God, we've just been like isolating her. She's like an only child. In our defense, it was because she was sick and she wasn't allowed to go outside. She was it's like true. the little kid with polio that couldn't go <laughs> and play with the other kids. And well, they'd look from the window longingly and I they'd know. be pale and be like, oh, father, I'd like to get outside. <laughs> Why are they're they like, British? no, Timmy, you can't go outside until you're. <laughs> you got to wait. We Did have... you know that everyone sounded British up until like the 1930s? Of course. Like it was the, the prevailing well, we, our cool English speak. comes from Eng England, <laughs> London, England. Right, but when you when you would hear, even now, you can, you can tell if someone is uh, a little upper crust if oh, they yeah. if they drink their their tea with their pinky in the air in the United States, or if they have cucumber sandwiches. They 
<laughs> even though they they have their family has not been what if you're like my mom and you hate cucumbers well she doesn't talk not, like that she's not upper crust <laughs> she she's, doesn't like the crust right no she's crust fancy extra fancy <laughs> she is fancy from her town she is uh, but sometimes you'll encounter americans mm -hmm. who and, and it is proper enunciation in a lot of ways oh what do you mean the people who talk like this kind of it's a little bit english but it's also british well they don't sound like that it's not a spice girl <laughs> uh there are people who have really rounded fucking vowels chimney sweeps you know they, what i'm saying they talk well, they, there's some interesting people in the United States who speak a certain way. And and it's interesting. I always thought those were just like foppish people. Well, those are upper crust people. They're wasps. White <laughs> 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 Anglo-Saxon Protestants. I think that's uh, what a wasp is. White, you're not a Protestant, so, and you're not. No, white Anglo. Saxon Protestant. No, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Why would they say white Anglo-Saxon Protestant? Because that's what the, the, the Saxons. The, What's a Saxon? I think they're of uh, English descent mm. from Saxony. Mm. From Sussex, maybe? No, Just from <laughs> the, the Saxons from Sussex. Certainly. And, sweetenly. So, <laughs> no, uh, we have no comprehension of our past. And if you don't, re you know, if you if you fail to remember your past, you're, mm. you're doomed, doomed to regret to repeat it. it. Regret oh yeah it. that too <laughs> if you don't remember how do you regret it sean riddle me this well when you encounter it's you're a like, conundrum. oh the past i god damn should have i remembered. really blocked that out i thought yeah god damn um but yeah some people do i mean we have funny accents in the states in general but i think yes. a good a good example of a change in accent even though the language is the same is quebec sure it's a fork there was a fork in the road and some went white and some went we oui. yeah <laughs> Some went poutine, some went Patate. croissant. Oh, oh patate. Croissant. Oh, croissant. Oh. Yes. Hmm. This is delightful coffee we're having this morning. I'm having cold brew. I find cold brew, does anybody else know, notice this? If I have cold brew, it's actually easier on my system and my stomach. I don't feel so, quite so jittery when I have like drip. Drip, dip, do, do. I think it's because it's filtered. Like they filter it. Is mine not filtered? Well, it goes through that little filter, but it's not really filtered in the, the way The best part of waking up is filtered coffee in your cup. Non-sponsored. <laughs> Today's. No, but I find language really interesting. We've talked about this a little bit, but there used to be that show, How the States Were Made. Oh, yes. It's a TV show, and it was, I think it was on TLC or some, you know, not like ABC, CBS, uh, CBS or anything like that, but it went through how the states were made in general that was like at first they went through all 50 states and then they started to go into states and like dialects and i actually follow this girl on tiktok who i love i'll have sean put the link down below she's no i won't oh okay well unless you, know. you provide it to me in advance <laughs> i, I always do i usually do okay hey, but i don't have to chase you down for that link oh it's chasing me so far you're like katie send me that tiktok thing i'm like oh yes we'll do anyway there's this woman that i i love her whole shtick she's hilarious anyway she was talking about how moving to the midwest i think she's from boston originally or something but she was like there are a lot of things that people say in the midwest that i don't understand and one instance was when she first moved there she worked at a coffee stand or a mm -hmm. coffee shop and somebody i think it must have been like a little cafe because the the guy brought his cup up and he said warm it up i'm and, about to warm it up katie i'm about to warm it up sean that's what i was born to do do you guys know that song? Someone try to rhyme, but they can't rhyme like this. Oh, Chris, I don't know how. I don't know any more than that. <laughs> I missed the bus. That was the B side know, that to that one. That was a pretty good jam, actually. I crisscross was good when they came out. Man, they blew the doors off everyone. I wore my overalls up like backwards for a long time. Nice. We should whoa, do. Whoa, wicked, we should start we just should walk have... around the neighborhood with our clothes on backwards. <laughs> Those Californians sure are strange. <laughs> Warm it up, Katie. I'm about to. Wicka, wicka, what? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have, awesome. We'll have so many friends. Yeah. So many friends. They're real pioneers. Look at them. <laughs> I think Christina would get behind it, so at least we'd have one other buddy. Mm. Poison, poison. <laughs> poison. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so. That girl when, is poison. When we were talking, when she said warm it up, when, when she said that to me, because I was watching, she doesn't tell you what it meant right away. She's just like, so i looked at the cup and there was like a couple like three drinks left in it just a little bit in the bottom and i was like warm it up because i felt it felt kind of cold i put it in the microwave for like 20 seconds that thing came out piping hot because there's like no liquid in it right so it's like super hot she handed it back to him and he's like i said warm it up she's like 
or he said what what the hell is this she's like i i, I warmed it up you you asked me to warm it up and this is where it might be her being her comedic you know making it more funny than it is but i believe also this could have taken place where then because she's saying literally that's what i did you asked me to warm it up i warmed it up i don't understand what the problem is and he says i told you to warm it up and she's like yeah that's what's going on I, here I don't warming it up means to fill up your coffee cup in the midwest it's a it's a oh, thing give they me a say. but see i see she warmed it up and other people see, say, that was what i was missing i didn't catch that in your story Oh, I said at the beginning that wow. like it was a Midwestern like talking about language and how oh, it's yeah. in different states and she moved to the Midwest from like Boston and she worked in this coffee shop gotcha. and the guy came in and said warm it up or he Oh, and then we started rapping. I'm sorry. Then you got completely distracted because it said warm it up and then you're like warm it up, Katie, and off we went. Yeah. But other people in the comments are like, oh, we say heat it up oh. or a warmer. There's different things that people Give say. Give me a steamer. <laughs> no, a steamer is just milk with syrup. Oh. Yeah, no coffee. Nobody wants that. It's separate unless they're kids. Kids love steam. Medium regular. Yeah, well then double regular, like you go to Duncan's. Anyway, I found that really funny and I was like, if you have any weird dialects within, we probably already asked you for this, but please, if you haven't sent it in. How do you order in. your coffee where you're from? Oh yeah, OTDM pod, that's P-O-D as in podcast, at gmail.com, send us in. Hmm? Yeah, send it in. Send us in your story. Recipes, your description, the name and then how it's made. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're having a triple kitty cat splitter splat, whatever it's called. <laughs> that sounds really gross. <laughs> Why is there cat shit in my coffee? <laughs> <laughs> it's a civet. <laughs> I like my refined coffee. Triple kitty cat splitty splat, please. <laughs> That's That'll two be dollars of milk. <laughs> the cat has nine nipples, just milk them. I've got nipples, can you milk me? <laughs> I <laughs> Kitty cats play splat so bad. It's a civet, Katie. It's a. It's you just the, didn't realize that your rhyming turned into it. It's the most popular shit coffee among rich people. You wouldn't know this, oh, but oh, and diddly do. <laughs> oh, now you know. <laughs> oh yes, I'll have a triple <laughs> kitty cat splittery splat. Okay, we're just being silly. <laughs> Did you know that Belbiv Devo? Uh huh. Um, Belbid DeVoe, mm -hmm. as well as Ralph Tresvant. I don't know who that is, but okay. They were all part of, with Bobby Brown. Mm -hmm. Wasn't Bobby Brown part of Bell Biv DeVoe? No, that was uh, Bell Biv and DeVoe, not Brown. Oh, Previous, I didn't even realize that was their last name. There was a group, a boy band from the early 80s. What Mr. Was, Telephone Man. What no, was Bobby all? Brown? What was his name of his band then? Or not I'm band, trying to think group. of it. I can't think of it. It's driving me crazy. I know. Someone out there who. Oh, is, they're screaming at the thing. All they're like, like, you idiot. That's my favorite band. In in my defense. Mr. Our, Telephone we, Man. We woke up this morning because our power went off and came back on. Our day started off on the wrong foot, which was me jumping up going, whoa, what's going on out well, there? Well, we both were like, was that the dog door bell? Because we have that bell that when Roxy hits it because we're still potty training. And he goes bing bong, and I know that sound because we hear it like a zillion times a day. And especially when she really wants to go out, she hits it over and over and over until you get over there. Anyway, it it ding dong because the power came back on, and it was like seven o'clock in the morning. You're like, oh no! And did she like, pull a Houdini, oh. a doggy doony, dini, doggy doony, <laughs> doggy dini? Yeah, she's a Houdini. Yeah. Um, but I was like, Sean, do you not lock the the crate? But there's no way, you guys. You have to like lift it up so it hooks in and then lock the little lock. And she just sleeps. Like she legitimately does not fight the crate at all. She loves her crate. But anyway, it scared us. Sean got up and then I couldn't, I was like, what happened? And then uh, anyway, so we were woken up abruptly. It was rude. You know how I know people are out of touch? How? There was an article that came up in my news feed from, and I don't. Oh, new edition. Fuck. Thank you. I was like, I had one of their CDs. <laughs> Did you? Uh huh. So that was Bobby Brown, Belle Biv DeVoe, mm -hmm. Ralph Tresvant, and I think some other dude, Tim. <laughs> Tim Sanchez. <laughs> Tim Sanchez. Mm. Ola, ola, ola. Uh, yeah, and they had a couple of hits, but then they broke up and went their own ways, you know? Yeah. A lot of them do that. Well, I always for wonder. Sure. Um, we're never going to do that, though. No. We're, no. We'll keep the band together. You, you'd, you'd stay popular, and I'd roll into a obscurity you know <laughs> where are, are they now 
They're you both know, on the couch, it seems. We've been in the YouTube game Sean's for a while. rolled over into the couch. Mm-hmm. There should be, just because YouTube typically, I mean, there are some original concepts, but typically YouTube is just rehashing concepts that, or they're down chain from, or they're derivatives of, of original concepts, you know, like. Oh, uh, like people aren't creating anything new that hasn't been created before. Is that yeah, what you mean? you're just kind of We're, re, retooling it to fit YouTube. I would assume at some point in the near future, mm-hmm there's going to be a YouTube channel or some online media channel on some social platform, whether yeah. it's TikTok or whatever. Where are they now? You know, oh, like, yeah. and it'll be like the D'Amelio sisters when they're like 50. Like Shay Carl, where is he now? What's happening? I saw a tweet from him today. Really? He's and, still around? Well, I don't, for some reason it popped in my Twitter feed and I don't even follow the guy. I don't know why. Someone must have liked it or something. Somebody in your might have retweeted it or liked it. He was tweeting about <laughs> cryptocurrency and I was like. Oh, wow, buddy. Maybe he got in on it Didn't early. Didn't he own a ski hill? They bought a ski hill with their uh, maker money. Mm-hmm. Good for them. I never bought a ski hey, hill. Hey, those people made out like bandits. They, I remember when Disney bought them out and everybody showed up like Louis Vuitton purses. And I was like, wow. They were they they had that Louis money even before that. They did, but I think because they got that huge payout. Yeah, it was supposed to be, mm-hmm. it was written up in the news for $1 billion. $1 billion. That's dollars. with a B. But that, then they uh, didn't end up making that because it was dependent upon metrics, like meeting yeah. certain metrics. And they so didn't. it sounds like they they sold for seven hundred and twenty million or something like that. Still, it's a lot of money, a lot of ducats, as they say. Mm-hmm. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. Keep you out of craft dinner for a couple of years. Yeah. So, anyways, back to puppy parlance. Oh. Uh, Roxy's in doggy daycare. Meet new dogs. And I didn't realize that they don't feed them when they're in daycare. So. They are going to feed her because it was her first time. And I brought, I was such a good dog mom. I thought I'd put my Ziplocs. I said, Roxy St. Louis, breakfast, Roxy St. Louis, lunch. Because <laughs> she's not a wake up and eat girl. She's more like you. Takes a little while. Um, also, she just was tired this morning. She's like, why are you guys waking me up? Why is my doorbell going? Anyway. Yeah, she was just as confused. I know. And that's a, the cutest is when she, like, because then Sean uh, laid back down for a little bit and I came out just to play with her a little, make sure she was okay because I heard her rustling around. Turns out she was just chewing her doggy toy, but I thought it might be her bed. And I was like, oh no. Um, but anyway, she came out of her crate and just laid like between my legs and curled up to sleep. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is amazing. I have two, <clears throat> she's got multiple personalities, you know, like there's the well, one where she's she's wait, crazed outside. And I just found out that zoomies are mm-hmm. are actually the highest, not compliment, but it's the highest form that she can express of her satisfaction or her, you know, her she happiness. Was, yeah, she was filling out a Yelp review for living in her house. It'd be like five stars. Yeah. Zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. Five zoomies. I, I think five it's, Zs that gave me dog. such like, oh, because she zooms almost every day. She'll oh, zoom, yeah. zoom. Yeah. So that's a good th- a good sign, right? She's happy. Yeah. Um, what did your friend say that? Uh, oh, so my friend Christina. So I went over to record with uh, her, and if you guys don't know who Christina P is, she has her. She calls them her booth boys, but there's Any and Nadav. And anyway, so Any was sharing. So Christina told me I was telling her about the Zoomies and how we learned about that, and she was like, oh, "That is the cutest thing ever." She's like, "I didn't even know that. I thought it was just energy getting energy out." And I was like, "Me too. Me too." And she's like, "I have people Zoomies." I was like, what? And she was like, you know, like Tom, her husband, Tom, she's like, Tom is just like boring, consistent. And I need that. Cause sometimes I'm like, la, 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 la. I get excited. <laughs> she's like, I have people zoomies. She's like, I just want to, I'm so excited. <laughs> people zoomies. And so we started calling people zoomies. And then she was like, any, you have people zoomies too. So I'm just flew my eyeball. And I guess he just randomly sings. He's like, sometimes I get excited. And then, da, da, da. And I thought that was really cute. And I think we should start a thing called people Pumis. zoomies. Pumis. No, don't need a, you don't need to mush it together. No. It's people zoomies. Mm. Otherwise, people won't understand what right. you're talking about. So people zoomies. And so anyway. And then, I wonder what our audience people zoomies are. <laughs> what are your people? How Mine, do you express that you're happy? I dance. I definitely dance. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, what do you do? I dance and I make songs. I make up, make like fake songs. You always say, oh, is that your happy song or your food That's song? True. Or I'll be like, and that's my version of <laughs> what's yours. You I, don't might, I don't know if you have them because she asked, she's like, sometimes I'll she like, goes, I open think... my eyes really wide. Like I'm really excited, but that's no, you, there's a couple of things you do. Lay it on me. Number one, don't embarrass me. In front of people. <laughs> if it's a bad, it's a bad habit. No, I don't they're, want they're, them to know. They're cute things. And you let me know if I'm on, I'm guessing, right? Cause you only, you know, if it's like your excitement so if sean's excited about something number one he researches everything he can possibly research about it and reads everything he can possibly read about it and then he 
proceeds to tell me about it for like weeks. See, okay. you were like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, he does. And but then the, the, the second half of that kind of felt like an insult. <laughs> well, it's because <laughs> then you proceed to tell me about it. Well, that then I learn about something assault. kind of it's more like a joke. Like, huh? And then you tell me, then I have to learn about it too. Right. That's really what I was saying. Okay. Like I learned, I shouldn't be so sensitive. It's okay. You can be sensitive. Okay. Anyway, so there's that. And then the second is that when, if it's like an event or a timely thing, you don't sleep in, like you're up early and you're, he like paces around like a maniac. Snowboarding, and, bicycling, mm-hmm. hiking. A trip. A trip. Yep. Work? Not so much. Who, who gets zoomies for work? Right. Nobody. Nerds. <laughs> Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I'm so excited. I got up early today, brushed my hair. And whew, I was like, you know what? Today's going to be a great day. Yeah. And you're like, Sh- keep it down, Stacy. Sure. <laughs> Somebody's got a case of the Mondays. Fuck you, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But you know, nobody That's gets. That's the real Katie. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But nobody gets the zoomies for work. I would get, I do get the zoomies for like cool work events. Mm, I can get excited. Ice cream day. Yeah, pretzel day. No one gets me down on pretzel day. No, but like when we get to travel for work and get to meet people, I get excited. Um, I'm always nervous for talks and stuff, so I can't really get excited because I'm too nervous at first. But I love like the VidCons and the playlists. Like I can get excited for events like that when we travel. You get mm. to go to different parts of the world. I got to go to Australia and Amsterdam. And I was like, I get to meet the people. You know, <clears throat> I could get zoomies for that. You don't agree? Well, it's different for With you. What? Getting zoomies for trips like that. No, work, I don't. Work trips. I don't uh, I don't get zoomies for trips at all, for traveling. Mm-hmm. I do like going to travel, but I never. The process I, sucks. I remember when I was a kid, we went to, uh, for rugby, we went to France. Uh-huh. And people were like, oh, are you excited to go? I was like, yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting. But I wasn't amped. You don't really get amped. I mean. I know that's the why stone, I drink copious amounts of coffee to. The to get Stones me there. are coming to Austin, and if you were able to go to see that show, because COVID, you're like, Ugh. but if you were going, you'd be amped. <clears throat> I think so. And like when the Canadians made the playoffs, you get amped, but it's very limited. That's what Christina and I were talking about—the fact that you and Tom are both pretty like, meh, and then we're like, well, somebody's got to bring the excitement. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but it's a balance. You can't both have zoomies all the time. No. You know, it's just a collision. It's just a collision we need to have. Yeah, that'd be an awkward couple to hang out with. Some uh, really spastic people, you know. Just yeah, well, even amped. think about like Matt and Alexa. Alexa's like super calm. And Matt's right. like, this is going to be amazing. He gets all excited. Yeah. It's always a balance. Yeah, like Larry, so excited. My mom, calm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I wonder, is that a pattern? Do you guys think that too? There's one of you in the relationship that's like the emotional Sherpa and then the other one is like, Meh. Along for the ride? Yeah. Maybe that's the balance. Okay. You know, nobody wants to date themselves. No. I mean, some people do. Some people definitely well, want to Well, I mean, those themselves. are called narcissists. Right. <laughs> don't, won't go into that. <laughs> but um, anyway, so we were talking about people zoomies and I hope that Roxy's having all the zoomies over there. This is my favorite sweater. Really? You had it forever. And is it has this holes considered in your a sweater? Mm-hmm. I know it's got a hole in this armpit. A big old. <laughs> you can see my armpit hair. Barely. It's like kind of towards <laughs> the back of your arm. Makes me feel a little rock and roll to have a hole in my armpit. It's just like, you know, your vents. And here. Your ventilation system. I sewed it up though, somewhere somewhere on my collar. You darned it. I darned it. Darn tootin'. I taught you that word. I know. It was like, there's at least, I don't know, it might be an exaggeration, but at least once a month you use a word that I'm like, what, what? And you'd be like, because I, I would say do the mending, like I'm going to mend something. John's like, I'm going to do my darning. And I was like, No, what? I didn't say do my darning. No, but you were talking about darning something. I'll have to darn those socks. Yeah, I'm going to darn something. What's the difference, dude? <laughs> I don't know if darning is a word, though. Do my darning is not good English. Well, I was just, it's just a casual comment. Hey, Holy Christmas, do you want to go to English class? You can take it there. <laughs> I'm just teasing. He does that. Anyway. You said as if I know if that's proper English. I know, but you say that you know. Anyway, you were darn. You were gonna darn something. Yeah, I'd assume you can say darning because it's an action, and to darn. Yeah, but do my a, darning is not. But to darn is a verb. Right? Do my darning. Do my darning. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, he used that word, and I was like, "What the fuck is that?" And he was like, "You know, like, there's was, a hole in my sock, dear Katie." And, and I gotta darn it. I gotta darn it. And I had not heard that term. 
And I, I find satisfaction in taking a needle and thread to fabric. I do not. Really? I would uh, never want to sew like or make jeans, you know, like make jeans. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't want to be in the schmata business here, but uh, you want to be a seamstress? No, but I do think that like being able to repair something rather than mm -hmm. throw it out is. Uh, I mean, I, I do I like it, it, and it's fine. But I used to sew like if I had holes in my jeans because I patches. I, yeah, I'd, I'd sew a patch. I like a a good patch. I used to do iron on patches, and I would stitch them on a little bit too because the iron on stuff. Yeah, would wear I think out they look while. cool. I mean, you can totally rock that. People, I'm sure, still do stuff like that. It used to be mm -hmm. flannel. You'd put flannel underneath your jean and, and mm -hmm. stitch it. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I've, or I've, a hanky, that kind of material. Ooh, a hanky. I love a hanky. But I used to, I mean, I mend is the word I would use, but you would say darn. Yeah. And it was just funny. And there was a word the other day that you said, and I was like, I don't think that's what it means, but I'm not sure. And, and it's so facto out, documento. No, it turned out I was right. It was, a, it was not the right use of Anti disestablishmentarianism. No, it was a simple word. I don't know. Potato. Potato. Yeah. No anyway. Like potato. <clears throat> so, Sean uh, likes to shame me with his vocabulary. I don't. I don't do that, do you I? No. Know. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, <laughs> now I'm all self conscious about it. No. Uh, but. Well, here we are. Yeah. So I'm wearing my favorite sweater. Mm -hmm. Favorite. And oh, a squirrel is running by the window. Oh, <sighs> it just gave me the finger, that bastard. That sounds, sounds uh, this sweater is going to last a long time it is not falling apart but the weather has changed so i can finally i know wear it. it's fall although it's funny here because fall means it's like 65 at night and then 82 during the day no i think it's going to get colder even it though. will but for right now it's yeah. so like i think we it's a november thing uh, the end of november is when it uh, when it turns yeah. when the weather turns on you we had this wicked crazy rainstorm just the other day wicked and it was funny because Ro <laughs> Roxy, she, so she was born May 6th, I think, or May 7th, I think it was May 6th. It's in my phone. Well, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so she was born in the summer and she's only seen Texas summer. And so the rain and stuff like that, she's just not, she's like, what? And she had to go potty because we'd come back from my birthday dinner at this lovely place called Olive in June. And we come back and get her out of her crate and you, know, you got to take them right out to go potty because it's it'd been like two hours so anyway we <laughs> we go to take her out and it's like pouring and I, I go out with like an umbrella and i stand there and she pees and then quickly comes in and then the rain got even more intense like crazy and i because i'd opened gifts i was going to go take the boxes out and put them in the recycling and she insists on going out if you go outside like she wants to go out with you and so she walked along with me and she's just getting pelted with rain like so she's drenched and <laughs> she's like trying to walk beside me and i tried to put the umbrella over but she was just getting i mean you know it was so funny and halfway there she turned back she's like fuck this shit i'm going back to the house <laughs> i know it's all new experiences for her i know it's kind of cute it's fun to like watch her just always be curious and confused. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And her ears go wink, 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 wink as she tries to figure out what's going on. Did I ever tell you about when I first moved to Southern California and I bought a bunch of sweaters? Yes. That was tell a mistake. them. I don't know if you've told them. Well, I uh, moved to Southern California, I bought a bunch of sweaters. <laughs> but he moved from like the Great White North, so it was really cold. Well, I was in New Hampshire. New Hampshire. And when I was there, mm -hmm. it was very cold. And when I came out to California, it was winter mm -hmm. and it was cold. So I went to the outlets to get some clothes. Oh, the outlet. Yeah. And I went to the mm -hmm. J. Crew outlet and they had. I love a J. Crew oh, outlet. amazing sweaters. Like, you know, sometimes you go to the outlet. Oh, like and those kind of cashmere blend ones they had where you're like, everything, wow. Like cable knit and, mm. you know, like fisherman sweaters yeah. and, and, and like wool and thick cotton they had all sorts of them and i like a jake we used to have a shitload of i'm sure they still they do. do but we've lived in warm climates <laughs> anyways yeah. for whatever reason this outlet had what i liked and i was like woohoo score only seven dollars woohoo score Texas outlet, so you and get i loaded up on like 12 or 13 sweaters mm -hmm. blew my budget on sweaters no pants so i walked around <laughs> like an board idiot shorts. in underwear and and sweaters <laughs> yep board shorts and sweaters. <laughs> look at that guy 
<laughs> Par- his business up top party down below. Yeah, for sure. I looked like a, a, a regular. walking mullet. The, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Anyways, so you bought all your sweaters. But then I couldn't wear them. I didn't realize, and but I was determined to wear them. So I was oh, so you just the sweat. first year I was in Southern California, I wore sweaters all the time and I looked great. <laughs> but I was very uncomfortable because when you wear a wool sweater and it's hot, it gets itchy, like itchy. You know that? itchy around your neck and, and it smells a little weird wool when it gets wet yeah like a wet a little... dog but you look good <laughs> in photos i looked fabulous just don't get too close yeah and I also don't like touch wet, me because it dog. itches yeah <laughs> so stupid sometimes i i don't think things through all the way i that think everybody's that way yeah but then but, what happened you gave them to goodwill or something yeah yeah eventually i i i, I part ways they sat in my closet folded really nicely for like five years <laughs> and and eventually i remember cleaning them out of the closet and i was still like well i do go up the ski hill in winter i was like sean you're never gonna no you haven't brought plus on... styles that changed a little bit you know i had some of those uh patterns that oh yeah were no longer hip although they're probably coming back in now and i say wait long enough yeah but anyway. anyways so there's that. But I love this R. one. This is like a, a simple classic. And I like the fact that it has some holes in it. Yeah, I don't. I remember. Did I get that for you or did no, you I get that? No, I bought this. Okay. Yeah. I, I know forget. what I like. I'm you... very particular. That's not true. Well, I am. <laughs> I just don't voice that particularness. You do. But when it comes to clothes, you're pretty simple. <clears throat> okay. I you like d- the basics. You like basic. Yeah. Basic you classic. You just, you don't like a lot of anything. Yeah. Not too waspy, but a little waspy. Although it's funny because then I'll push Sean <laughs> out of his comfort zone. <clears throat> Sorry, I just ate before this and it always makes me go. <clears throat> anyway. Flummy. I think you're allergic to I think I'm allergic dairy. to eggs a little bit. Just a little bit, but I push It's probably through. just the eggs that we get. I bet you if we had chickens. The chickens? I don't know. You know. Did you know that chickens come in all sorts of shapes and sizes? Yeah. Hello. There's even those ones that are like really like really fluffy like or, the silkies yeah. or whatever yeah there's like because i i'm on craigslist as as you know because i tried to buy that that jet the oh, uh, yes, remember yes. the jet that was a joke it was not a joke <laughs> the joke of a jet um anyway the last thing i was going to say about the clothing before oh, yes. i was rudely interrupted Sorry. is that when i push sean out of his comfort zone he'll always be like uh like that blue tie-dye sh- shirt that i uh, made you get for that event remember we went oh to yeah that's blue? cool i still wear that <laughs> I got a lot of compliments and all it takes is just one or two compliments with the same thing. And then Sean's like, that's my favorite thing. And then I'm aware until it falls apart. <laughs> Reinforced behavior. You know, but, couple that's, of compliments. but that's what happens is I'll, I'll make you get something that you're like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, mm-hmm. and then you'll get a compliment and then you'll wear it all the time. Although there are some things that I'm surprised that you like as much as you do like that last kind of flowery shirt that I got you from shop Bob. <clears throat> it's your yeah. button up. Oh, you yeah. remember you're wearing it to the, the doctors and i was like why are you getting so dressed up and you're like i'm just getting ready remember sean doesn't he blocks everything out that was just a few days well ago. if someone's gonna make me take my clothes off i might as well you know <laughs> give them a show dun, 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 dun. <laughs> i didn't have to take my clothes off for the doctor so you might want to check in on that <sighs> our doctor was very nice and, and i like her a lot but they they forgot to order one of the blood panels and so now i have to go back I know it is annoying, but I can understand he forgot to check a box, you know, yeah, exactly. like, so he didn't get his cholesterol but then checked, I, which I is important. I thought they were really paying attention to me, but it turns out mm-hmm. their mind yeah. was elsewhere. Yeah. They were good Christina's trying the balance of nature for her cholesterol too. Well, here you go, guys. I am here to report back. I don't know enough about my cholesterol yet, mm-hmm. but everything else on my panels, my blood work came back amazing. Like they gave me five zoomies. I like the... <laughs> I like that Sean pretends amazing when it's just like you're within normal parameters. That's like all it says. Everything was good. No, I I went through Quest and Quest Diagnostics has a different chart. Oh, mm-hmm. um, it does say that you're Sean within the range, the but it, it says excellent. You yeah. Get, yeah. Well, that's not just within parameters. Excellent means oh, Sean needs you're, a plus. You're, even, a plus. you're in like yeah. There's the parameters, <laughs> but you're like really close. Like, you know what I mean? Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if uh, <laughs> parameters are like seven to 11, mm. but you're a nine, that's perfect. Mm. You're exactly where you need to be. <laughs> and and uh-huh. the you're- doctor said, I don't, I'm not allowed to tell anyone this, but good job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave me, they gave me a lollipop when I left. So mm. I knew that I was. Ex- excellent. Yeah. You did great today. And I said, I did. <laughs> uh, and then I put my pants back on and I left. <laughs> 
<laughs> but anyway, so your blood panels. Everything came back amazing. And I, you know, you're always worried, right? You're getting older. Uh, la- not the last time, but. I'm not getting older, but f- you're getting older. You're going backwards, <laughs> which is amazing. <laughs> hmm. Which brings me to Midnight Mass on Netflix. I've been watching that. But What? Yeah, How did this bring? Good show. People going backwards. Your in brain. Age. Oh, I was like, your brain makes no sense to me. So, anyways, the doctor <laughs> was looking at the blood panel and said, "Good job, buddy." Actually, they didn't. I just got a report on my email that came. Yeah, in. I was like, I, it goes into it. the portal. I interpreted the data myself. Uh, By interpreted the, data. Yeah. <laughs> Five gold stars. But everything was fantastic, and I was like, "Wow, good," because I was worried because I, you know, it's your health, and yep. and maybe something's going to be like a red flag, like you've got ass cancer or something you know? like, <laughs> I'm like oh no i got all the markers oh, you, you know? do have to poop in a box though yeah well that's that's the other thing i have not done yet <laughs> she she said uh i can either um you can do the colonoscopy, colonoscopy. and i was like what's the alternative because she was leading like there's something else she's like i don't want to do this either you know yeah and uh the the alternative is the poop in a box and send it in the mail i said yeah, the, that sounds like fun the color guard or color guard it's just funny because I said that last time too. Color, I'm like mixing color guard, which is like you put your poop in a box and you shove it through the mail. The versus color guard, color which guard is where you're like, bad memories show. I thought I ordered color guard. <laughs> you know, but instead, a bunch of people pooped in the box at the game. We didn't have, I think we might have had color guard at our school, but it was not a big deal. It was like part of band. But it was funny because when I went to college, one of our sweet mates, Becky, was like into co- color guard. Like she was into color guard. And she pooped in boxes all over town. No, but she, she was really into color guard and was like, I had the ribbon and the blah, blah, blah. And all of us, like Veronica, Nina and I were like, what? And then she had to show us like video of her like. We were like. You got the spirit. You know, you're cool. really amped up. It was zoomies. It was like zoomies. People zoomies for your school. With ribbons. Mm-hmm. anyway if, have you been in color guard do you have color guard where you are we didn't really i still don't think we really had it we had like people in the band that didn't play the instruments but they would be the flag holders or you know part of the thing marching right. band but colon anyway. guard but colon guard lasts for three years versus the uh the the stethos not the stethoscope but the uh the camera that goes up your kazoo <whistles> uh, that lasts for 10 years they say and i was like you know what i'll be back before we go years, every year so, for our physical. So I'll just, you know, take Keep the, the box off now. It's like a weird French cinema film that's going on in our bathroom <laughs> right now because it sits on the counter and I walk by and and, and I can picture like the camera angle being the reversed from the box, the box is like looking Sha, at me. And put then, your specimen here. Yeah. And you're like, I'm so hungry. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't feel comfortable about this. So I don't. And oh, then. Oh my God, my brother. Um, similar to your Kohler colon guard is that when my brother and my sister-in-law went to uh i almost said americorps but what did they do peace corps peace corps in order to get approved to go you have to go to this place and like poop in a bag and give it to them mm. and my brother's like it's the funniest place like i wish someone would film this just like to be a fly on the wall and he's like because everybody looks so guilty like they come out of the bathroom with their like wax covered bag and they're like here you go. <laughs> it's you know what Demeaning. I mean. It's like yeah, my brother's like never in my life did I ever think I'd be more uncomfortable in a doctor's office than pooping in a ba- like pooping in a bag and giving it to the doctor. And you're like okay, okay, bye. Don't judge me. <laughs> yeah, giving samples to the doctor, samples of anything. And he's like, everybody looks at each other like I know what you did. Yeah, I did it too. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, and you it out of there. In, you're waiting in the waiting room, you know, for your name to be called, and the guy next to you also has a bag. You're like, wonder what's in that bag? I know, oh my god! But that's the thing: pooping in a thing that's not the toilet is, is not comfortable. So you haven't done it yet? No. <laughs> and they, keep, but I will. They I keep will. Pounding in. Also, <laughs> I take metformin for longevity purposes. Mm-hmm. Metformin is fantastic, from what I understand, possibly. Yeah. And the new doctor uh, agrees, which I thought was cool. Mm-hmm. I like her because she seems Progre- very progressive, pro- newish. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, she had the crystals, and she was like, "Yeah, ta ta." She had the like finger. Yeah. I always have really wanted finger um, thimbles. Yeah, the not thimbles, uh, symbols, symbols. Ta ta, two two. This doctor's crazy. <laughs> well, it's a little cheaper than going to the regular doctor. You sign me up for a witch doctor. 
<laughs> does it around here? <laughs> just gonna do some smudge sticking. Smudge sticking. I don't want you to smudge anything. I just want to poop in a box this like a regular <laughs> Western doctor would make me do. No, but she seems very with it, and also progressive is a good way. Like she's up to date on stuff that like ooh, ways that we can. You know. Yeah, I had heard about metformin through David Sinclair, who's a doctor who researches aging he thinks aging is a disease as opposed to something that, inevitable yeah <clears throat> and uh, senescence is is something we can perhaps slow down Ooh, that put really it, made me giggle retard it <laughs> a little bit and you know uh we could age yeah and it makes sense like if mm -hmm. you're if you're boozing all the time and smoking cigarettes you're going to age quicker than what? if you're live <laughs> rude take it back I'm trust me if they told me there was vitamin c in it i would start smoking tomorrow i've never i just it's never been my thing right but metformin is mm -hmm. something that uh, people use for pre-diabetic or diabetic. Yeah, it's a uh, diabetes medication. Yeah, with really, you'd have to talk to your doctor about it, but apparently there's not a lot of yeah. uh, Hashtag issues with it. Yeah, not a doctor. It. Right. <laughs> so what, what it does do is it modulates how much, I think, sugar your body is taking in as well mm. as um, how your body reacts in certain instances with uh, high levels of- We don't really of, know what it does, but it helps with longevity. Well. <laughs> I didn't want to tell the doctor that I was taking something off script because mm -hmm. I'd heard this and I had asked another doctor and the doctor said, yeah, I don't care. Well, and our doc doctors in LA, or at least our doctor, they're kind of like, they're more used to people like doing their own thing and wanting to be young longer, which I know sounds- Obsessed with youth. Yeah, and, I, and the our doctor was very progressive and stuff like that. He'd be like, oh, you know what you could try? Well, I have an 85 year old that's running marathons. And yeah, whoa, he's like, whoa, I just whoa. replaced both his knees. I was like, okay. So well, it, it was stuff little... like that that you hear where you're like, wow. Yeah. And also you're in a big city. So there's like a lot of- um, Schools of thought and a lot of research. Yeah, a lot of research happening. Like even one of my old bosses, Edna, had this neurological disorder or something that happened. And they told her that if she hadn't been in LA and gone to Cedar sinai where they were doing cutting edge, edge research right. on that particular issue, she probably would have died. Yeah, being close to a pool of doctors, I think is better yeah. than having a single doctor. So anyway, long story short, our doctor was like, yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, and she said, a lot of people are take you? it. And she looked at me and she goes, why are you taking it? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I heard this doctor talking about it. And I, I was curious about it. And she goes, are you taking it for longevity? And she was all mm -hmm. like mischievous. And I mm -hmm. said, why, yes, yes, yeah. I am. And she goes, you know, I haven't heard of that many people taking this outside of people in the medical community. I was like, I am so cool. There's people in the medical community. She goes, Oh, you'd be surprised. Plastic surgeons, uh, cardiovascular. She, she went on like, yeah, she's a lot like of them I'm thinking it. about taking it. I was like, well, that's why I was like, maybe I'll can I tell her. you a secret about it? <laughs> I said, I don't notice looking younger, but I do notice a little looser stool. <laughs> Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, oh, I've heard that, that is, you oh, know, it's something. like a side effect. Yeah, exactly. So like you're pooping taking the box. Well, it, better put it maybe green it. apple splatters in the box, you know? Oh, no. <laughs> so it'll, be, I, it'll be kitty cat split splat. <laughs> yeah, so I'm embarrassed because I don't want to send in a, a, a loose sample. Not that they're going to know it's me, like there's a photo of you on the box. They also don't care. They don't <laughs> care what it looks like. They're taking a bit of it to test it. I know. This is too much for the podcast. I shouldn't have gone down this road. This but is too much. hey, trans in full transparency, mm -hmm. this is what's going on in my yeah, life. Yeah, and, yeah. But anyway, we so, like our doctor. She spends time with us. I liked that. First of all, um, I hated that it was 8 a.m. appointments. Are you regretting your Yeah, your I'm, I'm sweating. It's not the sweater either. It's oh, the. We got, you got your vents. My vent. Let your vents out. <laughs> but anyway, we went to get all that set up. Our next is our dermatology appointments. Uh, I'm going to have to um, make some confessions to them too. Yeah. What happened? I've been listening to an anti aging doctor, <laughs> <laughs> and he says to take hot sauce and rub it in your eyes. <laughs> Curse your mother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Throw up. Yeah. I mean, I'll try anything just to, to be healthy. Anything but get good sleep. That you're, or exercise. <laughs> or cutting out chicken wings. Mm. I, you know, I want the easy stuff. Does it come in a pill form? Will it make me younger? Give it to me. Do if it. If not, oh, I have to make lifestyle changes, you said. Oh, goddamn. No. But I, I have made some life lifestyle changes, mm -hmm. um, mainly around eating. And I, I'll tell you what. It's sensible because I still eat, you know, very loosely. I'm not, uh, I'm not eating a ton of garbage, but I do eat garbage, you know. We do like garbage. <laughs> <laughs> but we eat our vegetables. 
Mm. And, and I do limit the amount of sugar I take in. Mm-hmm. If I do take in sugar. Yeah, we don't really eat much sugar. No, but you got for your birthday. Thanks, Jared, by the know. way. Um, cake pops. Yeah. And I didn't know and what a cookie. cake pop was. I'd never had one. Oh, you yeah? Which it? I think is a good testament to the fact that I don't, don't eat dessert. And they I have them at eat. Starbucks. That's how I knew what they are. And for a long time, people were making them at home. Oh. So you could, because they're easier for kids just to have a bite of something versus like a whole piece of cake well here's how you know it's good and this is how i give it five stars you left yesterday Mm -hmm. and i had my lunch Mm -hmm. i had a sandwich and then you looked into the box i looked into the box in the fridge and i was like "Hmm." which one did you pick i uh i don't know it had white frosting on it with like i think brown Mm -hmm. Brown curly cues Mm -hmm. yeah so i took a bite of it and i was like god that's so good and as i took that bite and broke the shell the other half fell on the floor (gasps) Did you pick it up and eat it? I did. And that's how you know that it's so fucking good that me, who's a germaphobe, first of all, I never drop anything on the floor and pick it up and eat it. He doesn't. And two, I do we have a time. dog with dirty feet who's we pretty clean, licking though. her bum and then, you know, yeah, she's, yeah, yeah. she's a dog. She's a dog. So, it was that so good. I picked it up off the ground. I was like, <laughs> snap. Like and then ago. I was disgusted with myself. <laughs> I stood in the kitchen, looked around. No one had seen me. No, no neighbors were looking through the window like, <gasps> aghast. <laughs> That man just picked up a cake pop off the ground. He has ew, a dog. What a ew shame. Yeah. Those Californians are weird. But uh, no, I had dessert for the first time in a while, mm-hmm. and I, I enjoyed it so much so that I went back about ten minutes later. Got another one. I got another one. That's the thing. They're nice and small. Because that's, <laughs> that's what I, that's what I like about it. Is they're not like I don't have to commit to. However, one of the reasons now the cake is very moist inside. Yes, this thing. it's almost doughy. It is delicious. Like Starbucks has the, the you know, those mm-hmm. banana bread loaf Yeah, they're always a little gooey in the middle. So good. Mm-hmm. Here's where, or one of the reasons why the cake pop is so good. Okay. They've mastered the icing. That's a hard shell icing. Mm-hmm. And it's like eight millimeters thick. Mm-hmm. Eight millimeters. Very specific. It could be 8.5. <laughs> but it, it's not just like a dip and it's gone. Like it's not a thin shell. It's it's like a good amount. It holds it together, really. Yeah, <laughs> It's, mm-hmm. it's fantastic. A lot of R&D went into this cake. Delicious. Pop, except for how it should stay on the stick. They kind of missed that part. Well, did you bite from the top or did you bite on the side? The side. Well, that's why, because it's a stick in the middle, dork. It's going to fall off. Well. It needs the other side to hold together. Come on now. Bite from the top. How do you eat a burrito? From the side or from the, the top? From the top. It's Who wrong. eats a burrito from the side? And it's all the stuff flies out? What are you trying to do? What's wrong with you? You eat a burrito from the top and you unwrap it as you work your way down and an ice cream cone i suppose you think you you eat it from the top as well (laughs) all things you eat from the top so far that you've said wrong you poke a hole in the shell of the cone and you suck the ice cream through as it it makes it i saw i forget who it was it was like a friend of a friend when we went to dairy queen when i was growing up and they would stick a straw in and suck the bottom so it wouldn't run out and i was like wow brilliant genius genius Mm -hmm. but yes from the top didn't you just tell me yesterday about someone who was a real a-hole to <gasps> yes on tiktok mm-hmm. so i love tiktok you guys know this and this there's this like trend going around where it's like tell me you're a something without telling me you're something and this one is like tell me you hate your job without telling me you hate your job and it's like this teenager who is clearly on a like man in a drive through at some kind of fast food restaurant and has the the microphone that they talk to the customer like pulled up covered with their hand and they're trying not to laugh and they're just recording the audio of this person who has driven up to the drive-thru and has proceeded to say something to it's LA because she says I've been to the one on Crenshaw and they don't do it right either and you're like then don't come here anymore but so her whole tirade tirade yeah is that she wants a root beer float that doesn't have too much ice cream because last time she drank the root beer really quick and then the ice cream it was just ice cream didn't have any time to melt because she's a goddamn idiot so she was mad at them for putting too much ice cream and not enough root beer and she proceeded the guy said oh so you don't want as much ice cream no that's not what i meant i meant i want it all to come through the straw like a root beer float should and i'm thinking to myself but you know that there's ice cream in a float and usually it's like a spoon straw thing also it's a fast food restaurant this is not you yeah, know, you want you want like dining. catered service? Fucking go to a real restaurant or and sit down. Or make it at home, Tina. Yeah, come on, 
Come on, Jenny. Get no it offense together. if your name's Gina. I'm just we're just making up things. Yeah. Come on, Sean. Get it together, man. Come on. Don't come be on, so rude. Come on, Dwayne. Jesus Christ. Right. Anyway, so she proceeds to yell at this guy without really yelling at him. You know when people just raise their voice because they're angry about something else, but she didn't have any legitimate reason to be mad at him. And she she was like, So I want you to put the ice cream in. And then I want the root beer in, and I want a separate cup with extra root beer. And he's like, okay, so you want like a small root beer in? No, no, I want the root beer float. But Do you I think want she's extra just a root- grifter, just I getting don't... a free root beer? But like, come on, lady. Like, if you're this particular, splurge for the 60 cents for the small root beer. It's like the idiots who, you, you, and you see this, everyone listening oh, yeah. has heard these stories. And if not for modern recording devices, these idiots would just be urban legends, yeah. but well, only that guy's friends would have heard about this ridiculous lady. Thankfully, she you <laughs> now know, it's forever on TikTok. Recorded, know, but so. like people are like, they'll call nine one one because you know someone oh, yeah. they're out of hamburgers or something. It's so McDonald's. stupid, and you're like, you could be preventing someone else from getting help. But right. anyway, this lady went on and on about her root beer float and how it needs to go straight through the straw. And do they have a bigger straw? Because then maybe the thick ice cream could get through. It was so stupid. And the guy said, I'll do my best, ma'am. Just pull around. And then it cuts. And I was like, wow, you don't get paid enough for that bullshit. I'd like give Tina her root beer float straight to the face. I'd be like, don't talk to me that way. Also, I don't know if you know this, but those people don't make a lot of money when I know. you're at a fast food joint so you might want to be nice to them because they're doing something that you can't see spit special yeah (laughs) welcome to burger world (laughs) pull around (laughs) but also just it doesn't cost this is something that i don't even it's just i don't know if i picked it up from someone else or it's just life lessons but it doesn't cost you anything to be nice to someone like acting like it takes something from you to you for you to just show kindness is bullshit it is actually easier and it's better and then both people feel good about the situation because here's the deal here's the deal all she had to do was go up to the drive through and say hey last time i didn't feel like there was enough root beer in it so could i get like a bigger cup but no extra ice cream with more root beer because i want it to all melt and i like it kind of milkshakey and then i guarantee the guy would have been like sure or she could say do you have a little blendy thing for some of the shakes you just like blend it up a little bit i'd be like cool pull around None of this, like, I went to the one on Crenshaw, and I don't know, and, 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 you know, like. Difficult people lead difficult lives. I guarantee that she had a problem, another problem, five minutes later. Oh, and then five minutes after that, there was something else yeah. going on. And constant, constant. She is her own worst enemy. Mm-hmm. Well, and probably it, her neighbor's worst enemy, too. Oh, my God. Tell us the story. What, what story? The neighbor story. Well, it's a personal story. I don't know if I should tell someone else's business. But <laughs> what would you do if you lived in close proximity to your neighbor, which a lot of us do, mm-hmm. and your neighbor <laughs> prided themselves on having a stereo system and they were playing music like electronic dance music, EDM, like oh, doom, doom, nothing doom. like a oomph, oomph to really set off your night. Yeah. And like you can't even listen to your own TV because it's that loud. You're hearing Jesus the Christ. Do they share a wall? No, no, the. <laughs> So, Holy fuck. Call the police. Call the police. Yeah. PJ, PJ's been putting up with this for years. Uh, He's unfortunately, got more patience than I do. Yeah. And he, he texts the guy says, hey, buddy, your music is really loud. Can you please? Oh, and he has his oh, phone number? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh. Ooh. you know, and then he'll, he'll turn it down like 30 minutes later. And this has been going on for three years. Oh, but mm-hmm. the music is every night, all night. All the, night? Yeah. So not even just like, oh, from like at nine o'clock to it's 11. Like, a, like he's living next to a rave. So PJ went and lost his mind the other day. <laughs> Not lost his mind, but he 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 yelled at the guy and was really pissed off. He's like, of buddy, course. all the time. And well, I I turn it down if you text me. That's not the point. I shouldn't have to text you. I'm not your you. dad. Yeah. You know, have some common courtesy. People work. That's it. God damn. Oh, so I know. So PJ uh, messaged me and the you know the next day and was like, ah oh, man, I lost my cool. You know, and we all lose our It's cool. not a good example for for the kids and. I said, yeah, yeah, it happens. Explain to them why you did it and you know, how you regret years, it. I mean, I, I would lose it <laughs> I, as well. well. We've had our own version of this known as Pianorama upstairs twice. So we had the first piano lady who taught children, literal children, like six years old, like hot, cross, bump, 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 in a huge grand piano above our apartment which you all know the walls are just filled with newspaper it, sean was going nuts so because at the time bad. it was like living inside of a piano yeah because i would come back from the office and being out all day 
then he'd be like already agitated like immediately like we got to get out of this fucking place and blah blah blah, blah. and i was afraid i was going to blow my stock well and so i went up to cool talk to her she, and talk to our landlord and then she they were then because she pushed back to me so this is this is how i deal with the situations like this is i went up to her and i was like you have to understand my husband works at home we're we're in the house and it's so loud it like reverberates through our entire apartment and we can't we can't have you having that piano they can't play on the piano and she said oh well we in two weeks we have a recital i said i don't care we can't have that happening anymore well can we do the keyboard i said i tell you what tomorrow try the keyboard and we'll let you know if it's okay and she didn't and then I told our landlord and they gave her a 30 day notice. What? Uh, I was wondering because he needed a signature for. Oh, the mailman, Mr. Mailman. Anyway. Well, no, but she was obstinate. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the lady. Yeah. Pushing back. I'm like, they're children. Like, yeah, you can't have but, a business operating in your apartment. Right. There's, so I think we've all been there where there's there's neighbors that are inconsiderate. Oh, send us in your inconsiderate neighbor stories. You're right. Please. And tell us how you manage it. Because I said that to her and then I even went and talked to her, I think, one more time. Anyway, and then they got a 30 day notice and they were moving. Well, anyway. because she she told the landlord she was going to continue to operate her business in the in, of <laughs> teaching kids. And the landlord yeah. was like, no, you can't it's do like that. She's like, well, I do it. Yeah, it was so, so they were like, you need to leave. Some people are just daft. They were really mean though, those people. Remember even the, the census people, they yelled Who at Who yells at old ladies, but. Anyway, so, so PJ, PJ had this, a similar situation. He and tore I, a strip off the guy. And I understand. I would have oh, lost man, my Oh I would have too. He called me or we, we talked and he, <clears> he felt awful. I said, you know, it happens. And honestly, somebody probably should have talked to this guy beforehand, like it should have gone on have, so long yeah, three years come on don't be such an idiot if someone's texting you all the time hey turn down your music also maybe. side note who needs that reminder assholes we lived in an apartment for 10 years and even now that we've been in our house since what for like six months i still will when i'm vacuuming late at night like last night like 9 30 i checked the clock to see if it was past 10 because it's like ingrained in me i'm like oh i don't want to wake anybody up who the fuck am i gonna wake up no we're in our own house but it's not that hard to just consider someone else yeah be considered and so pj after we talked he was like oh thanks i felt like a, you know maybe i was mm -hmm. losing my i said well maybe you, other stressors in your life are bleeding over and that's why you know your kettle but not getting whistle. sleep also is such a exactly whew, whew. and so he came home from work yesterday oh, yeah, yeah. and on his doorstep yeah sean's like he was, found some on his doorstep and i was like oh did he that took guy a leave dog shit on his doorstep so i took burn a picture it down. of it pj took a picture and he sent me the picture and i'm going to put it on the screen right now yeah and basically so I, it wasn't dog shit it wasn't dog shit it was a note from the neighbor <laughs> not the neighbor but the neighbor next to the neighbor yeah so uh, i'm gonna read it here because i think it's important to know that pj was in the right and maybe this guy needed a speaking to yeah <clears throat> it's a tin foil uh yeah like a little uh, traveling for food thing. yeah <laughs> with uh, the edges folded over and there's a piece of you know the lid the cardboard lid and written on the lid underlined twice with an exclamation mark <gasps> thank you big capital letters had a good night's sleep without the horrible house shaking noise last night your very appreciative neighbors and then in parentheses, shortbread inside. Mm -hmm, not so sweet. PJ stood up <laughs> yeah. for for what was right, and the yeah. other neighbor was really really appreciative. appreciative. And and you know, I don't know. He probably we heard him screaming outside. <laughs> oh, PJ thinks the whole neighborhood hurt. He he was he, well, he seen, lost it, and, and he, he doesn't lose it very often. That's the thing. He's kind of like my brother. Now it is kind of funny because it, it is Canada, and PJ was out there. With the hockey his, stick. He had his hockey stick. He's banging <laughs> on the fence, and he's in his pajama bottoms. Knowing PJ, he probably didn't have a top on, you know, because yeah, he like, doesn't wear a shirt. He's like there. Matthew McConaughey, all in good shape, you know. He's like, hey. He's like, you son of a bitch. Now is a good time to take our shirts off. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> and he's got his hockey stick, <laughs> rattling it on the fence. You bastard. No, we joke about it, but that's a good visual. It is a good visual with his hockey stick. Yeah. But I mean, I would have lost my cold too, but yeah, <laughs> I also probably would have just called the police. Yeah. Like, that's just how I would well, deal no. with it. I'd try to talk to them like you did. And if I texted them and it didn't change it, I'd be like, I would just text them and say, you leave me no other choice. I have to call the police. Yes. Because we can't live like this. I, he did mention that, I think mm -hmm. in, in his uh, discussion with the, uh, the young DJ. Oh, in the, with the hockey stick? Yeah. I'm calling the police. <laughs> oh my God. That reminds mother. me. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> but fair enough. 
Yeah. You have to respect other people's space. The stick this the hockey stick where the sun doesn't shine. It's going blade first. <laughs> oh my God, right? I love, like you do this and PJ now does this too, but there's something about, maybe it's not just Canadians, maybe it's just people, but I swear to God, Canadians that I know always have a hockey stick around and they use it for all sorts of things. Like it's a we had a tool. mud wasp trying to like set up shop on our house and Sean got the hockey stick out and knocked it down. <laughs> And the guy that was cleaning our gutters was like, oh, you never know what's going to come out of those. He was like scared to see it. And you were just like, whack. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about that. It's true, though. A hockey stick is a good implement. They should sell that in the gardening section. Yeah, of, the ho- uh, it's a universal tool. Yeah. Call it something, you know, like the lady who's selling like the spoodle. It's yeah. like a, a spatula and a spoon and yeah. whatever. You have to give it like a clever name. For like sure. Like the, I don't even know. I, I Like some hockey pun, you know? The universal stick. <laughs> <laughs> right. The old Sherwood. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we'll get Eric St. Louis right on that. He'll, uh, he'll start he'll selling. Whittle, he'll whittle us one right up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, another person at the door. We're so popular. UPS. I wonder what that is. He re- uh, he re- He's the one that likes Roxy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We have a lot of random stuff coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lord knows. Could be more vitamins. I am taking, oh yeah, so going back to the uh, medical uh, condition, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, everything's A-OK, I'm doing good, and I really think it's because, one, I'm not eating a ton of sugar, mm-hmm. two, we do eat a variety of vegetables. I wish there was a new vegetable that wasn't I like cabbage. I think you have to go to like the Asian market. We should go to the H-Mart or whatever it's mm-hmm. called here. They there's, have good veggies. Yeah, there's like a couple Although of Asian markets in Austin. I won't buy them if they Austin. come from China. They have to be made or not made but grown here in the united states but i like her like i want to go to the asian market but it can't be well from china there's asians in the united states there's i American know asians. i'm just it's just a funny statement you'd be like i want to get stuff at the heb but it can't be from texas right <laughs> it's just funny i'm i've got a gripe with china i, mean, I know it's they fair. know i'm sure they're watching i'm sure they know they see it, see all here all um president xi ping is probably a, is it ping is that his last name i have no idea she xi nobody nobody cares um my blood work came back fine too. All good. Yeah. Nothing to worry about. Cool. I, I mean, I don't need the pat on the back or the excellent or any of you that. You just knew anyways. You look at the clarity in your eyes in the mirror in the morning. You're like, I'm fine. Well, I feel, I do feel good when they ask me a bunch of questions. They're like, hey, uh, you know, how, do you smoke? And I'm like, no. And they're like, have you ever smoked? And I'm like, no. And then they're like, uh, are you pregnant or nursing? And I'm like, God, I hope not. No. And then they're like, um, you know, have you, do you have any? And they have those huge lists of symptoms. Like, do you have dizziness? Do you have nausea? Do you have, uh, do you have a history of, and I'm like, no. Like, you know, I'm like feeling pretty good. <laughs> oh man, I, f- I fucked up so bad. Uh, I, I filled out that form. Mm-hmm. And you know how uh, you go over the form with the the physician's assistant yes, before, before the physician, she comes in, mm-hmm. right? So I don't know if this is like this in other countries, but basically a physician, a physician's assistant is the person who, does all the prep work with you, yeah. takes your weight, your blood, uh, or your, uh, uh, your blood, blood pressure, pressure <laughs> things of this nature. And then after that, the doctor comes in and, and you go over everything and talk about things. Mm-hmm. And it just seems like it's more efficient, probably a better use of the doctor's billable hour, right? Yeah. So um, I'm going over the list that Katie was just mentioning where you checked off anything that's ailing you or any procedures that you've had done. Because mm-hmm. it said, did you have any surgeries? And I was like, well, I have had, I said, yes not major and then she wanted to ask about that i was like oh i had gum graft surgery (laughs) on two and then when i was 17 i had a lymph node removed under my armpit right so i didn't i didn't have anything i haven't had any surgeries and i get to the the end of the list and it says uh have you had your tubes tied your tube tubular ligature Uh and i said yes Because I uh, I got the old snip snip uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> so because... you did have a tubal ligation, but not not those tubes. Well, so the gal gets it. She goes, "Oh, you." This, this, <laughs> she looks like at the form. She looks confused. She, she's like, "Um, oh, it says here." I was like, "Yes." <laughs> she goes, "That's for a, a woman," and I was like, "Well, yeah. well, like the man but, version." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I must have read it wrong." She goes, "Well, it says right here." tubular ligation i was like is that not what i <laughs> I, I had the <laughs> i'm trying to like explain I had the, and they tied the, yeah she goes do you mean a vasectomy i was like yeah she goes, that's not what this is <laughs> and i was like i don't know man I, you're like yeah i felt so stupid <laughs> 
I had my uterus removed as well. Oh my well. God. So I had something <laughs> <laughs> not as bad as that, but. She looked at me like I was a little daft, but that's okay. We had a laugh. Yeah, I would giggle too. Yeah. She's like, um, <laughs> I want to be sensitive, but um, that reminds me like six years ago yes. when I was applying for my own health insurance for like the first time, I guess on the form I checked male instead of female and then when i got my card i didn't yes. even notice because who even looks at that shit and then i go in to like see my doctor or whatever and they were like uh mr k more and i was like what and then i came the doctor's like um it says here you're a male and i was like i'm not i'm not and so then they're like uh you're gonna need to call your health insurance and square this up so in order to change, I had to send them a copy of my birth certificate okay. and my license that right. both say female, and then they would change it. And it took like five calls and like six months. It was ridiculous. And my mom's like, you should probably be a little more careful when you fill out those forms. Thanks, like, mom. I know. Huh. Hey, we do the best we can. We and do who the knows, best we can. Who knows the right words? You know, you were, you're like, I did the thing. And just, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> Yeah, there's tubes and they ligated them or they died. I don't know. They said they were, I don't know. I made a knot, my naughty bits and <laughs> now I cannot naughty bit the, the naughty bits and the, make a baby. <laughs> Plus, snip snap. Okay, let's get into letters. Okay. And with that, let's snip snap right Again, away. I just want to read the letter that P, I want to acknowledge that PJ he blowing right his top thing. was, you know what? It's fine. Sometimes it happens and sometimes we don't necessarily need the law to step in, although I think the law should step in and, and make this guy turn down his well, music. Well, we should, or as people, be out. able to like communicate and make things better. But this guy's clearly a dickwad. Yes, and and what's PJ the, was really what's worried. The He's like, first tenant of our religion: don't be a dickwad. Don't be a dickwad, PJ. I think the fact that you received these uh, this shortbread inside and that said "thank you" mm -hmm. underscored twice and exclamation mark had a good night's sleep without the horrible house shaking noise last night. Your very appreciative neighbors, and they gave you shortbread. I know they made you a goodie, buddy. Good on you. You're you're like Clint Eastwood, also saving a town good, I love from bad guys. Yeah, you know. So good on you. Let me pull up those letters for you, Katie. Ah, let's see here. Opinions that don't matter. Adder, adder. I don't know if we ever introduced this podcast today. <clears throat> Hello. How do they know my name is Katie. Hi, I'm Sean, and welcome to Opinions That Don't Matter. A place you're, where you send your letters. <laughs> it's like it's a live show. Mm, okay. Oh, we have one last speak pipe from Father Zubik. We are number 11. Uh -huh. I'm going to play it. Okay. Are you ready? I am ready. You just sometimes have trouble with stuff like this. So. Okay. Here we go. You got to hit play again. Salut tout le monde, this is Father Zubik from La Cirque. Salut. Sheep do not live on grass alone, huh? Par exemple, sometime Mo, R, R, and I all go to the restaurant for supper. Not the last supper, mm -hmm. just regular supper because it's hard to get reservation for 12, 13 people these days. You know? <laughs> Me, I always order the bacon appetizer, which freaked them out every time mm. and make them worry for my immortal soul. I tell them, just taste my bacon cheeseburger. The bacon cheeseburger is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. So Agreed. who do you think is going to help, me or them? They don't call me the radical priest for nothing, eh? My sheep ask a lot of questions about hell. Fire have been a long time for me for Catholic because of the devil and that old hell thing. We have experience with small fire like the burning bush and the Inquisition, but I must tell the truth, fire never turned out well for us in the end. I think this may be trigger our obsession with holy water. Oh. It is so hot this summer, causing big fire around the world. But just to remind you, if you think it is hot now, <laughs> just wait. <laughs> Till next time, remember to be kind and take good care of each other. That's uh, funny. Hey, I wonder if, thank you for saying that in Father Zubirk. Uh, I wonder if there is someone who blesses the fire, that, or the water that they use um, when they're firefighting. There's oh, like, I don't think so. They bless the reservoir first, or they bless imagine. every every helicopter with the big basket of water hmm. very interesting that's a good question, question. I, do, I do not know <laughs> but yeah that's 
a lot of people asking questions about L. L. There's no H. I know in that's in, in French. It's always funny. But your hair is the air. Mm -hmm. There's no H in hair. Well, there's no H in L either. Right. Yeah, it's just weird. Yeah. So. But weird. if it's something with an E that starts mm -hmm. with an E, you put an H at the beginning of it, and that's how you pronounce it in French. Just to fuck things up for everybody. <laughs> Make it hard like, for those uh, of us trying to learn. Everywhere? How would you say everywhere? If you're French. Everywhere. Yay! <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> no. See, you do speak French. Oh, I don't at all. I went to, I found a new tailor in town um, because I have, I got two pairs of pants and of course they're too long because that's just the story of my life. Anyway, I went to go get them emmed. That, there you go. Um, and the tailor is French. When she heard my last name, um, she was like, oh, Saint Louis, are you French? And I was like, oh no, my husband. I was like, my husband's Quebecois. And she was like, oh, I love Quebecois. I was like, blah, 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 blah. And she starts, I was like, oh no, 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 I don't speak French. And she was like, un, not poquito, because that's Spanish. It was like, uh, per. Per? yeah. And I was like, uh, what's smaller than pu? Anyway, and she was like, <gasps> and then when I was leaving, she was like, I have a and that just made me laugh because I was like bonsoir I have <laughs> I told Sean I should have said bonsoir like the opposite that'd be fine that would have worked I mean because you're saying goodnight yeah but it was like in the middle of the day mm, that would have you know, been a little awkward like, like 11 a.m. yeah it's awkward but anyway she was a cute fun lady she was so excited to speak French with someone and I was so, so sorry to let her down okay we have a letter from Leah oh and I'm hello. already excited because it's entitled uh -huh. another unique sport question mark yes. exclamation point by the way huge retraction on oh. the disc golf yeah wow is it ever good wow i have been watching a lot of it really it's amazing where do you find the time well i you know <laughs> usually when i'm thinking about the kohler guard i'm mm. <laughs> <laughs> wasting in, a couple of minutes mm -hmm. <laughs> i wipe my phone down by the way guys just so you know everybody, every day I everybody wipe. brings their phone into the bathroom but every day i wipe my phone down okay yeah no one's questioning you as i hold your dirty Don't ass phone in me. my <laughs> okay ready yes hello everyone this is your ambassador of joy live from beautiful cologne and it's cologne right or Cologne, that's what, Cologne, yeah. just kidding, Leah. Okay, as you may know, I listened to this podcast while riding my bike in circles in the park. And today I had to stop because I saw the funniest thing happen right in front of my eyes. Yes. Of course I took a video so that you can see what I'm talking about. It's attached, a winky face. But for everyone listening, it's a big open space. Two teams stand on either side of a marked field, some holding sticks with foam on either side. One has a shield, and a foam stick, one has nothing. They run towards each other, hitting each other with these sticks, and some kneel down being guarded by the foam stick. Please, can someone explain what the heck they are doing? Maybe a safer version of a sword fight? It just looks crazy funny. I guess I'm not the craziest person in the park then, laughing to myself <laughs> while riding my bike in circles. Have a great weekend, lots of love, Leah. I can okay. see this. So here's the video, I'll turn okay. up the, pump up the volume. I don't know if we'll need the volume, actually, I should. Like... Oh. Oh, no, it is like a sword fight. Oh, they've got like foam sticks, almost like that. Uh, oh, 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 yeah. oh. run away. Ah. Oh, my God. The rule book. Oh, oh, run away! She takes a knee. What is happening? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody explain this to us. At first, I was like, it reminds me because the foam on the ends like is jousting or something. No, but it's like that that old show we had in the eighties where they wore American flag colors. It was called American, American Gladiators. Yeah, I thought it was that, but then the guy with the shield comes in with like a fit, funny sword thing, and then she just like hits him and then takes a knee. I know what a coward. Coward. Or are they gonna knight her? Like poke her with a oh, stick, maybe? Oh, yeah. In the middle of the battle, I was knighted. <laughs> Got five gold stars for all my zoomies I did. Leah, thank you for collecting such important Good job. data. And I'm very curious what the fuck that is. If anybody knows, please tell us. It's like your sister looking out her window in I that wonder park. if they're training for that. <gasps> Maybe Kim has like the legit with the real swords and that's like their practice. 
is in Cologne. Inquiring minds need to know. <laughs> Your sister, I wish, I wish it was still summer because I'm pretty sure they're probably not out there anymore. But if she could had video of that, that'd be great. She sent us some of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We might be able to dig that up. Okay. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Leah. Thank you for your reporting. Boots on the ground here and letting us know what's happening in your neck of the woods. And Very please, strange. People in the comments, if you know what this is, shout it out, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't dislike it. I thought it was kind of fun. Yeah. You know, sword fighting with foam is actually, you know, it's Safer. the safest way because I, I would like to be in a sword fight. Yeah, but you don't want to get impaled or anything. Can you imagine if there was, you remember in Dana Point in Orange County? Yeah. There was the... Uh, I wouldn't say it's a galleon, but it was a, a like a tall ship, but it wasn't even a big tall ship. You know what a tall ship is, right? The sailboats that uh, were sailed. And Do I know what a tall ship is? Yeah. What do you think? I'm an idiot? No. It's but, pretty descriptive. Tall ship. Yes. But it's a... Mm, it's a oh, mm -hmm, tall. I, <laughs> it's not... A sailboat? Yes, but they're like from a the certain tall era, you know, like Columbus sailed the ocean blue mm, and okay. all you, you know, he's a bad It's like guy. the one we saw at Lake Travis, that big sail. Sailboat? No, a tall ship is uh, a certain era of boats, I guess. That okay. It was it was when we were sailing the ocean as as people under sail power, like the Mayflower, and that was the most advanced technology we had. Okay, until you had power boats and. Okay, we'll continue with your story. I forget where I was going. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so it would be amazing if you had. It wouldn't even have to be a good one. It could be like a, a mock-up of a, of a of a boat of that okay. era, but like a pirate ship, basically. Okay, you really just want a pirate ship. In Dana Point, Disneyland. there was like a, a pirate ship sort of boat, but it was small. Uh -huh. Oh, I don't remember. Okay. Anyways, so a tall ship, if it was docked. And Isn't that bar out there, that funny uh, seaside bar? I don't know. And if you were to, to have mock sword fights on mm -hmm. a pirate ship, so like that oh, was, Jesus. you know, kind of like how they do paintball. You should work at and, Disneyland. I'm pretty sure they do that in the... No, yeah, but you don't, get to, Caribbean. you don't get to participate. You just have to watch it. No, I meant you should work at Disneyland. You could be in the Pirates of the Caribbean. It doesn't work that way. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. But um, that's, you know, that's what I would like <laughs> to do. That's what they're doing. You yeah, think that's preparing a good for business. That? What if you had... That's not a good business. Yes. And then you could rent out your pirate ship for like a couple hours for, you know, corporate engineers who would then like sword fight and take out their rage instead of, you know, being keyboard warriors on Reddit. I mean, I'm not going. Well, okay. I'm not your target it's audience. not for everyone. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not your target audience. <laughs> yeah, there was that that bar down there. It starts with a T, like Tufts or Tugboats. Turks. Or, Turks, yes. Turks. I knew I'd get there. Yeah, you know, there's always like a salty bar for- That bar was gross. Yeah. yeah salty. Super salty. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is from Maria, and it is entitled German-Brazilian Fusion Fan Mail. Hmm. I'm excited already. It says, Dear Katie and Sean, I wanted to write you an email, or I've wanted to write you an email for ages, and now I finally did it. Ta-da! I'm so excited. Well, it was good hearing from you. What's our next letter, Katie? Um, No. <laughs> We're just getting into it. Oh. I'm so excited. I love your podcast so, so much. Cool. Go on. My name is Malu. I think Malu. that's how you say it. M-A-L-U. Malu, and I live in Germany. I actually come from Cologne, too. <gasps> Leah, Malu. Come on now. So you got yourself a Kolshi Madachi. I'm butchering it. It's got the umlaut. The umlaut. Where is it? Kolsh. Kolsh Madash. Because if that's sh, sh, Kolsh, Maj. Mage. Mage. Kolsh. Like if, if the umlaut is over the O and it makes an O for Kolsh, uh -huh. if that indeed is how you pronounce it, then it's like MA a beer. would why. be like may like if, if the Kolsch umlaut makes Mesh. the o and o yeah instead then, of an all and to make the a a, a. instead of an a ah. and so it's now may. you've just Mesh. learned something new here <laughs> cool kolsch mesh okay match as we call ourselves here which means cologne girl oh. in the dialect from cologne which is not spoken often anymore but can still be found and learned here i love that there are little like dialects like local i wonder how many dialects speak. there are I don't know. It's a good not, question. Not around the world, but in, in, in Germany? Germany. Yeah. Yeah. I would assume the Bavarians have one. I would assume. It goes. Mm, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> and then the, the Colognes. Mm -hmm. I don't it know. It goes Kolschmash. Yeah. Yeah. Match. Okay. My mother is Brazilian and my father is German. So I am both. Ah. I have got both citizenships and I own two different passports. She's so fancy. 
she's mrs worldwide Miss worldwide i am allowed to vote in both countries wow and i am bilingual too since you showed interest in the brazilian and german language bilingual or trilingual are you german well, she portuguese speaks english, and english clearly. do you have the portuguese if you're a citizen i would assume so do you have the portuguese so she's actually tri trilingual mm. so fancy again she probably Ms. has four Mrs. and worldwide. she's probably like humble about it she probably has like italian as well she people probably has in like europe a are always like that i know they're like i don't really speak english that well you're like i didn't know you didn't speak anything other than english your english is impeccable right? and i speak this much german and they're like yeah but i don't think i could write a doctorate thesis in in english I know. I'm like <laughs> makes two of us right europeans are so so good they always have multiple languages in, in our belt. defense their countries are very small it's true and their languages are like from block to block. well we speak boston i speak new york it's true i speak howdy all texan we mm. speak californian mm. stay groovy we also speak washingtonian i say things like gators in order to get it out in the swamp there i'm like oh i know what he's saying he said them them we, gators them them the gators in the swamp there <laughs> and then we speak midwestern warm it up yeah Give me a warmer. Some okay. Subtle differences in the United States. And the Europeans are very distinct. It's very distinct. We are not Italians. We are Swiss. I don't know. You live in the same fucking mountain. <laughs> it's know? fair. It's fair. Okay. So since you showed interest in the Brazilian and German language, I thought, a, a, oh, I thought of a game for you two to play. Ooh. You know, those sayings or phrases people say, for example, like that's a piece of cake or a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Your English is impeccable, which have a different meaning in, con in the context that they're spoken than their actual literal meaning. I'm following you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Are you mm -hmm. picking up what she's putting oh, down? Oh, yes. I have translated a few of my favorite sayings from Brazil Ooh. and Germany and listed them down below. Now to the rules of the game. Yes. You have to guess what they actually mean and okay. from which language they're from. So she's okay. putting them in English. Yes, yes, And yes. we have to figure out which language, language they're initially what in. Are they, what are they trying to get mm -hmm. to here? All right. At the end of the email, you'll find the explanation and a voicemail saying them in the original language. Ooh, we've stepped up our game. This is a good game. I dig this one. This is, yeah, it's amazing. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Number one, I show you where the hammer hangs. German. I think it's German because hammer, I mean, <laughs> just sounds so German. It also sounds like something a German person would say, like Jürgen, yeah. I can picture saying I know, this. I can picture him saying it too. And I think it's like, I'll show you how it's done. Yeah. You think so? You 100%. Agree? Number two. It's, oh, I know this one. I've heard this before. It's worm soup. It's just, it's it's like messy. It's complicated. It's like all, like if something, I think, I've heard people say it's like worm soup. When you, let's say uh, you were a mechanic mm -hmm. and you like really fuck something up and I came in to try to figure it out and it'd be like a disaster. Like, oh, it's like all worm soup. Oh, like it's like all, a bunch of spaghetti. It's like a mess. Yeah, it's like spaghetti is what I'm thinking. That okay, might yeah. mean. It's, it's messy, but it, it'll get the job done. Well, we'll done. figure it out maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just throwing it out. Okay. And I think, do you think worm soup? I'm gonna go Brazilian? Yeah, it's messy. Messy. Number three, to bite the sour apple. That's German. Oh, see, I would think, I think that's gonna be Brazilian. I'm gonna switchy switch with, okay. with you. But to bite the sour apple, what's that mean? To, uh, to sin? To have something uh, that you don't, you don't wanna do. Oh yeah, you gotta do it. It's like, gotta bite that sour apple. To bite the sour apple i wonder if it's okay so that could be it but i wonder if it's like goes back to like adam and eve days where you're like you're doing something bad i'm just throwing it out there yeah, i don't know no, that's good uh did i get it right then what did i say no to bite the sour apple you said would to be, do something you don't want to do i think that's potentially right too to do something you want to do but it turned out to not be something you wanted that's what i'm going <laughs> final answer in sean's answer answers are riddles okay <laughs> number four kick off the tense brick i think that's german yeah that's definitely german as well kick off the tense brick mm -hmm. shake it off yeah maybe it's like uh like dust out the cobwebs like mm -hmm. you haven't done something in a while you got to kick off the tense brick first okay okay i don't know i think we're really messing these up i apologize M malu i feel like we're letting you down okay <clears throat> and the final number five is trip slash step inside a jackfruit now that's brazilian yeah because i don't think there's that much jackfruit i don't think people in germany, in germany yeah mm -mm. So, so trip or step inside of a jackfruit i think it's like you got tricked hmm. like you hit you fell into a trap uh i think you did something not very graceful okay yeah like you're like Ooh. clumsy like <gasps> stepping on a banana peel <clears throat> yep okay so here are the results 
I show you where the hammer hangs. Ah, ich sein dir wo der oh, it Hammer is hangt. <laughs> this one is a German, and it's not always a friendly phrase. We like it to show dominance. It means something like "I'm the one who decides" or oh, "I know better." I'm in charge. Okay, and who you're wears not. the leader hose? And damn it, and you're not. I'm the authority here. I'll tell you what to do. Which we were kind of in. Oh, I was like, show you. Where, I'll show you how to do this kind of. What did we say? Rewind it back. I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, number two, it's worm soup is Brazil. Oh. Sopa de minhoca. Minhoca? This one is from Brazil, and we use it to describe extremely simple tasks. Oh, like the opposite. Oh, it's of, easy. Which are easily completed. This is uh, as easy as worm soup. Worm soup sounds Just good. add water, <clears throat> a couple of worms. A couple of worms, you got worm soup. Mush them about. Ugh. Salt and pepper. Okay. Heat it up in the microwave for, I don't know, two minutes, and feed it to the birds. <laughs> Mm, is this worm soup it's so <laughs> simple a bird would like it <laughs> number three to bite the sour apple in den sauren apfel biven i'm fucking these up and i apologize in german we say it when we were forced to do something unpleasant <laughs> i think that was what you i was thinking it might be like sin based like you did something bad and you're like when you you don't like to do it but you do it i think you were right on I don't know. I think you were right on. Our memories are not that what they used to be. <laughs> Number four, to kick off the tent's brick. Chateau à Paul de Baraca, Baraca oh, is from Brazil. Brazilian. And I think it's very easy to understand where it comes from. When you kick off the brick on it, the, which a tent is built on, well, the tent collapses. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. And you messed up. And it's your fault. And that's the meaning behind the saying, I messed up big time. I kicked off the tent's brick. I fucked it up. Huh. That's fun. I like it. Okay, another one from Brazil, the jackfruit. Number five, step inside a jackfruit. Pisar na haka. I don't know, do you say J is a H? Or is it Y? Jao. Yaka? I, I don't know in, Brazil, in Portuguese. Sure, the last sure. one's also from Brazil, and it's meant in an accidental way. Like you accidentally tripped and stepped inside a jackfruit. I don't know if you've ever seen or smelled a jackfruit, but they're big and very, very stinky. Yeah, they're huge. They're like, like durians almost. You really stepped in it this time, didn't yeah. you? Therefore, when you step inside a jackfruit, it's messy, stinky, unpleasant, and it's an accident. And we use those phrases to describe those kinds of situations. Like, oh, I really stepped on a jackfruit with that one. Where you're like, ugh, I created. It's be like. Um, wow, you really stepped in shit. Yeah. It's like. Cow patties. Yeah, you, ca you caused this big issue and now it's, you're, in a, you're in a pickle. Mm. You're in a pickle, Rick. Okay. And when the jackfruit hits <laughs> the fan, <laughs> you know. Whew. Okay, so we have the audio. Okay, the first one. I show you where the hammer hangs. Ich zeig dir, wo der Hammer hängt. The second one, it's worm soup. Er muss Suppe de Mignocke. The third one, to bite the sour apple in den sauren Apfel beißen. The fourth, kick off the tense brick. Schuttaru pau der Bahake. Yeah, yeah. And the fifth one, step or trip inside the jackfruit. Um, Bizarna Jacke. Well, that's it. I'm sending you a lot of kisses and hugs and I hope you're doing well. Bye bye. Bye. Hey, bye. that was a that fun was, game. I, I dig know. it. I know. And she has such a good voice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. She says, I hope you enjoyed it. Forgive me if there were any mistakes. English is not my first language. Your English is amazing. <laughs> and you also speak German and, and Portuguese. So if we were to say something like that, that would just be. I just tell. I. I'd, I don't think I, I think I'd, that would be me step inside a jackfruit. Yeah, I would step inside a jackfruit <laughs> if I thought this person did not speak English as a first language. When you read that letter, mm -hmm. you can see the comprehension level is mm -hmm. uh, university level at the 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 lowest. You know, this yeah. is well crafted. Just tell me if you want more. I've got tons. One hundred percent. I love this game. Yeah, that was uh, good. That was fun. It says to round things up. Here's a picture of my beloved dog Luna, a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Oh, <gasps> beautiful! Oh, what a cutie! Oh, cute girl! What a boop! boop Looks very boop. Uh, pensive. Dogs are funny like that. Ro Roxy will just catch her just sitting and staring. Oh, okay. Side note: pro puppy parlance, really quick. So the other day. I I think I might have said something on Instagram or maybe it was just to Sean. I forget where if I've talked about things before. But I was in the back doing yoga. It was like on Monday, I think, yeah. in the back room, which is like our little workouty space. And I was doing yoga and Sean was watching Roxy and he went to go pee and she ran back down to because, you know, she doesn't like to be alone because they're pack animals. And she was like whining at the door outside of where I was working out. So I paused the stream thing that I was watching and opened it. And I was like, what's wrong? 
And then, you know, it was nothing. I hollered to Sean. He's like, oh, I was just going to the bathroom. I was like, okay. And then I, you know, put her back out, continued with my yoga. And then like, let's say 20, 30 minutes later, I come out and she's just sitting in our guest bathroom, just staring at the tub, like just sitting, looking. And I'm like, what are you doing? Are you like forlorn? Like what's wrong with you? Nobody wants, I'm just going to sit in here. Ooh. I didn't know what she was doing. It was so weird. And then the next the morning, plot thickens. I see a little black speck in that tub and I'm like, oh, is that a bug? God damn. I'm like, we've been trying so hard to like keep all the pests outside of the house. And as I go to like, I'm going to get it with a tissue. I see a tail sticking out of the drain of that tub. And I'm like, oh my God, it's one of those little lizards. Well, a couple things. First of all, I don't really want to kill a lizard because I like lizards. And also, secondly, all I have is like its back two legs and its tail, and I don't want to hurt it. And I also am afraid that if I try to grab the tail, it's going to bite me. But what's funny is, so the little black spot was... Poop. Dookie. What was the lizard so dookie? So the lizard comes out of the drain to poop in the tub, which is like the reverse of us. Like I don't even know if it the, came out of the drain. It could have come through the window or something. You know, I don't know how they're uh, getting into that part of the oh, house. Okay. And maybe it was going to the drain for water. It's our second spotting of lizard in that area. The last one was in the actual workout room. So and this darn is, cute though. They're like, they're super they're cute. They're like the size of your, your thumb. And they eat bugs. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. more power to you. Mm -hmm. But so I didn't know what to do with it, but I can't have it like running amok in my house and pooping in my, it pooped in our tub. <laughs> so I, I like tap on the tub and it like runs into the drain and I'm like, homeboy no wrong way where'd you come from go back so anyway where did you come from where did you go where did you come from cut nigel so i wonder if roxy was looking in the tub like if she saw the lizard but she would have attacked it she wouldn't have sat there all calmly right she could have heard it and she'd be like where are you motherfucker yeah next time she goes on hunts but anyway so i rinse the dookie down the drain and i don't know if it rinsed the lizard out but then there's more dookie last night again and i was like that lizard he's here but my like, go outside let me put you in a pitcher and I'll take you outside. That's what we've been doing. Put Find out where he lives and then shit in his tub. Yeah, I'm going to poop in his tub. Rude. Okay. Mm. Anyway, outside, we're getting out of puppy parlance and back into the letter. So I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, tell me if you want more. We said yeah. yes. To round things up, here's a picture of my beloved dog. And mm -hmm. congratulations on your new family member. What a beautiful doggo. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Wish you all the best and sending virtual kisses, Malu. And says, P.S., that's the audio recording with the Sains. Yes. And it was beautifully done. Beautifully. Okay. Are you ready? Well, we we have to make sure that you're on the contributors map, mm -hmm. which David redacted, mm -hmm. our prime minister of OTDM Landia, mm -hmm. uh, is dutifully populating mm -hmm. and you can find that on our Discord server. Yes. Which is where people are hanging out and uh, sharing information, photos of their uh, puppers, uh, but you will be added if you want to the uh, the map, mm. and uh, you will be a reporter from Cologne. Cologne. <laughs> well, we have Leah and her both from Cologne. Yes. Yeah. The Cologne group is strong. Mm. That Cologne, super strong. Okay. Are we ready? <laughs> this has no subject line. Oh. No subject. Mysterious. It's Muy from... misterioso. Mm hmm. Si, sí, si. Sí. It's from Graham. Are we ready? Katie and He's Sean. Back. He's back. He's back, baby. Katie and Sean and dear friends of the OTDM community. Howdy do. It's been a while. Sadly. This is not an email with a new chapter of Canadian Nights. Okay. okay. The creative inspiration is still suffocating under remnants of forest fire smoke. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Hope you're okay up there. That being said, I was confused to receive this voicemail over the weekend from a mysterious clergyman who appears to have found your podcast. And it asked me to play Courier to see that it ended up in your hands. Don't worry, I pre-screened it for podcast suitability as per the clergy's request. Okay. Frankly, I think he sounds a bit, <laughs> sounds like a bit of a gas bag, but who knows? Maybe he's just shy and misunderstood. That's for you to decide. It's a plain MP3 file. Hopefully you should be able to hear it. No problem, take care and be well until next time. From okay. Graham. Curious. The fired so, and rehired staff writer and head caffeine technician, and technically not an authority on hockey winning. Graham. <laughs> okay. The offspring and the holy moly. Oh, awesome. Well, good day to you all, friends. Or as they say in your country, how do you do? <laughs> or is that bonsoir au revoir? <laughs> Language is fascinating. 
Uh, permit me to introduce myself. My name is Father Rampage, and I represent the Western Monastic Order of St. Montgomery of Python, Incorporated. <laughs> I'm calling uh. in to you today from our parish cathedral, St. Faltes of Basel. Mm. Oh. I have reached out to you today because it has been brought to my attention that a certain fictional relative of mine may have been committing heinous sins against members of your podcast country and blaspheming the good name of caffeine consumers the world over. Stuff like, oh, let's see, you're kidnapping orphan children to hand harvest single origin beans, harassing <laughs> retired fictional hockey players, and this is what particularly upsetting to learn making danishes with not the cheesiest cheddar <laughs> uh, mon dieu <laughs> permit me to take this moment and sincerely apologize for any and all transgressions afflicted upon your peaceful podcast nation these actions are condemned in the strongest possible terms by the order of saint montgomery and do not in any way reflect our views we are at this moment taking steps to correct this action and we regret any inconvenience on your end. We have made sure to already dispatch a team of mercenaries to the... Uh, wait, no, sorry, that would be missionaries. <laughs> further discourage any continued harassment towards you. Let me assure you, despite our funny voices and our silly walks, we at St. Faltys are a simple folk dedicated to simple ways of living. We drink our coffee, watch our hockey, and say our dead parrots. Ah, uh, excuse me, that would be our uh, daily prayers. How embarrassing. In fact, we are currently hard at work preparing the sanctuary for a very important date. Come October 12th, we are privileged to consecrate our inaugural pilgrimage of the frozen pond when we pay alms to the Holy Order of the Golden Knights of Vegas. We plan to commemorate this auspicious occasion by observing the Feast of the Kraken. Uh, by the way... If my Catholic colleague, Father Dubuque, happens to hear this, Father, salute them all. Allow me to humbly extend an invitation to you personally, for you and your clergy de las Canadiens to attend our winter retreat at the Holy Climate Pledge Arena of Amazon on the 26th of October. It should be a good ecumenical experience for all. We will sing, we will dance. We will pray to our Lord Bezos to be delivered from the evils of the Bruins. It is a memorable time, and I hope we will see you there. All right, then. Thank you very much for your time today. Apologies once again for any inconvenience. Go in peace and serve the puck. And remember, <laughs> as we say here at St. Montgomery's, when you are out walking along the road of life, take an Uber instead. It's quicker. <laughs> I loved it. Uh, Salut to Mon. This is great. This is one. We have another. We're attracting the uh, the clergy. The, uh, they're, they're very interested. Well, you 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 know, it's just like um, if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, yeah. you give the but, radical priests a place to be. Yeah, we talk about religion. We talk about hockey. We we have a good time. Mm -hmm. uh, we're obviously uh, Python uh, people, and so what shows up in in our inbox are priests who who like hockey and uh, are python people too and this is fantastic i, I love it that yeah. was so funny yeah so many good jokes it, in they there. will come i know mm. thank you graham i yeah. mean uh you know uh we're, we're, where well, we're going with this is it was is, saint faulty of i know i'm like <laughs> a bit basel oh, so good so good anyway i love it <sighs> can uh, tell your it was a you were you were just the interface between the clergyman. Well, right? someone someone gave him yeah. uh, this message and yeah. he delivered it. Yeah. So you know, I appreciate you being just the oh messenger. from a mysterious clergyman. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So thank them. I like if, that they're going to the uh, the Church of the Amazon. Uh huh. Oops. Yeah. <clears throat> Bezos deliver him Bezos from the Kraken. Yeah. Uh, Seattle oh, okay. has a hockey team. Yeah, Seattle has a hockey team. You guys won your first game uh, as of uh, now. And oh, did they? Yeah, the Canadians have not won a game yet. That's uh, okay. We haven't had our home opener yet. No. But, uh, but the Kraken are... played in Vegas and lost. But it was they put up a good fight, and I was they did. I was proud. I was excited for them, and it, it's it's cool. Even like when Vegas first started, it was cool to watch like a brand new team come to be. For sure. Um, but I have to be honest, Kraken's uniforms are awesome. Yeah, they did a great job. And I'm really jealous, and I want one. Again, with the highlighter color. So the football team has like highlighter yellow. Us and the PNW or green love is it some... yellow or green? It's green. It's like a green. It's yellow. greeny yellow. Yeah. It's like a neon, like a, a highlighter. The hockey team has their away jersey has a strip of 
blue. It looks like Tiffany blue electrified. But it's, it's like really two strange. blues next to one another. It's almost like pium, pium. Yeah, green or teal. It's like a bright teal and then like an aqua blue. And they're, it's really cool looking. I think they're pushing the saturation on the TV just to make it even more. But then the Canadian, or the Canadian nights. But then the. There you go, Graham. Good job, buddy. <laughs> it's in my it's in my head. I can't get it out. Um, but then Vegas would have looked weird. Their colors would have been off. That's true. And nobody else's colors were off. I think it's just like because it looks I, great. The well, might have because you know how like reflective it might be reflective. Like you have a reflective strips on things. Like if you're gonna go walking at night, you wear like your reflective vest so nobody kills you. Uh -huh. It could have that stuff in it. Yeah, it could. I don't know. It, it looks good, and I'm not. Listen, I'm excited that there's another team. I hope I wish them the best. You know, I, am I going to root for them? Probably not. But if they're uh, not playing us, we root for them. Yeah, and I root for for good hockey, and I root for hockey too. I want hockey to be played everywhere. I think yeah. it's one of the great sports. So. And it just gives us another fun. It's like I mean, we watch lots of games anyways, but it's just like another fun team to follow. Well, and then when we visit, um, you yeah. know, extended family for me, mm -hmm. when we visit your family, uh, we'll be able to communicate a little Have bit more. Have some honky tonk. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys catch the game last night? They're like. <laughs> Yes, Sean. But they're all into it. They're really they into love, the Seahawks. And yeah, so I was like, it won't be, everybody will be super stoked. I'm sure yeah. if we went to Seattle, if we flew into Seattle today, everybody would be wearing those Oh, jerseys. for sure, because it's a cool jersey. You know, I, I mean, I Not like the Coyotes. Boy, oh boy. Is theirs bad this year? Well, they're talking about going back to their uh, their old school one. Oh, the retro? Yeah. Yeah, and it's not the prettiest jersey, oh. I don't think. Retro can be cool, but it has to have been, it has to have been cool then. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Right, right. So... Yeah. There are some stinkers of uniforms, you know, like everyone has. Well, it's a design. Sometimes the designs just aren't good. Yeah. What Vancouver Canucks had a bad one uh, hmm. back in the day, hey. I think. You win some, you lose some. Yeah. Have the Canadians really changed theirs much? I feel like it's almost always the same. No, it's pretty much, the uh, pretty much the same. Pretty, pretty, pretty standard. standard, really. Okay. okay. <laughs> I mean, there's variants, but you know. Yeah. Okay, we ready? We are. Thanks, yeah. Graham. Yeah, thank you, Graham, and the you. mysterious clergyman. Yes, thank you to the mysterious clergyman. I'm very clergyman. appreciative. That was very fun. Okay, so we have another email here, yeah. another letter from Blair. Hi, Blair. Hello, Blair. And it is entitled, Childhood Shenanigans. Shenanigans. I'm already excited. Who doesn't love shenanigans? I love it. It says, hey, Sean and Katie. Hey to you too. With all the discussions about things we did in our childhood, there were some odd things that my friends and I used to do. Oh. I am ready for this. One day, you all ready for this? Is that what you were saying? Yeah. Oh, okay. It took me a second. I was like, wait, where, yeah. where are we going? Because they, you know, it's just getting ready. You know, gotta get ready. Okay. One day, while at my friend's house, we were bugging his dad about getting a pool put in his backyard. He replied, with that's pretty expensive to just go and do. And we didn't have money to offer to cover the cost, but we said that we would help. He told us if we dug the hole for the pool, oh no, parents should not say stuff like this because kids keep will do digging, it. kids. We want a big pool. Kept us busy right? all summer. <laughs> oh my God, remember in Big Mouth when they dug with their feet? Uh -huh. Okay. He told us if we dug the hole for the pool that he would pour the concrete. Well, with his dad working in construction, we thought we had a deal. So we got shovels, headed to the backyard, and began our digging. Oh boy. We knew we should go wide and deep with it. So we right. dug up what we thought the shape of a pool should be. We piled and piled more dirt up in any free spaces that were there to put the dirt. We had piles three or four feet tall all around the backyard. Our backs hurt and both had blistered hands. I That's mean, what I was thinking. I was like, you should have worn gloves because whenever you dig for too long, you get blisters. That night, we tell his dad that we need to bring in the dump truck to get some of the dirt out of their way. He laughs, says, what dirt? I remember both of us oh, looking at each other in disbelief. We all walked to the backyard. He first laughed and then told us to put it all back in the hole <laughs> and fill the hole. We weren't young enough to understand his sarcasm. Turns out he thought that he, we knew he was joking. <laughs> nope. We thought it was real. What a letdown, right? You really wanted that pool and you worked all day. Yeah. That guy should have fallen tirelessly. Through. I mean, this guy's yeah. word is worth nothing. As a kid, though, you take everything so literally. Like as as he said, if you do dig it, I'll fill it. You're like, as a kid, I know what you're thinking. You're like, I thought he was pretty clear. And I think they did a pretty good job. Look at them yeah. doing all that work. That's a lot of hard work. Ask, <laughs> um, okay. So what a letdown. Ask the questions you have for someone with st uh, stretched ears. I will try and help answer some. As for some who had mine stretched for years. Ah, that's cute. That is good. I love it. Um, cheers, Blair. I love it. That's super cute. And man, you got a raw deal there, Blair. You did get a raw deal. And part of me wishes we had a photo, like, you know, 
<laughs> Digging up the At backyard. At least you didn't get in trouble. Right, for destroying the lawn or something. Y- yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just <laughs> funny. Hey, buddy, you better get that dump truck. We uh <laughs> Yeah, you're like we we got to get rid of all this what dirt. We mean? have we have no more room to put all this dirt. Well, we got rid of the rose bushes and the garden, you know, that was in the way. It was all in the way for yeah. for our we wanted to do this kidney-shaped pool yeah. here. <laughs> See our drawings. <laughs> where the slide's gonna go <laughs> oh oh my god i love it that is thank you for sending that blur that is super cute the pool was wide and deep yeah we i mean at least they were being realistic we knew it needed to be wide and deep mm-hmm. i wonder how big they actually dug it i know because in kid land or at least in my kid brain things that i thought were big turned out to not be as big of a deal like i'll tell my mom i'll recall something i'm like oh my god i remember nick and i built this huge fort and she's like you mean the, the piece thing? of plywood you nailed <laughs> to the tree and you hung a blanket off of it yeah big fort kid <laughs> yeah right but in my head it was like oh it's so cool oh my god you know it was, it was the best fort ever <laughs> we were big on forts and my favorite were what we'd call nature built forts where it was like the heavens shine down and built the fort for us so because i grew up in the pacific northwest there's a ton of like big old f- fir trees and when they when the boughs get too heavy the bottom ones kind of make like a little teepee tent yeah. at the bottom yeah. and i would pull the boughs back with some string or if i stole some rope from my dad's shop i would pull them back and make the doorway and then that would be it was already made fort presto it was amazing to keep the indians at bay we built fort presto and then my brother and i would take milk crates empty milk crates and we would fill them with it's pine like quite the western film that you guys were <laughs> We'd fill them with um, with pine cones to ward off any predators, anybody who'd oh, try yeah, to come. The wolves. We would hit them with the pine cones. Yeah. It's like and, Little House on the Prairie. But. And I even took my little, I forget the brand of it. It'll, I'll look it up because it's like a, it's still a kid's brand of stuff. It's like, anyway, play something. But it was essentially hard plastic. And it was like a, a little kid's picnic table mm. and i brought that in there too and it was funny because we had that fort forever and we would use it as like a, a home base you know for running out on grandma grandpa's property would be like come back to there and we just left those pine cone filled milk crates and that little kid picnic table out there forever and then when i was like a teenager my papa was like had somebody coming to clear all the brush and like clear out that area because every few years you have to like cut mm. things back and it'd probably been there for like 10 years I don't maybe a little less, but around that time. And he was like, hey, sis, you got to go get you your nickel stuff out of the fort out there. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and sure enough, she was still out there, had to pull her back in and get dump out the pine cones. And I was like, oh, my childhood it was sad. Yeah, for sure. Then the boughs got trimmed and Fort Presto was no longer. Fort Presto. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on. Are yes, we ready? Yeah. Okay, we have a letter. For Presto. Um, <laughs> I wonder if Nick remembers. I don't know if, the, um, we'll just, their their name on here is Where Love Blossoms has sent us a letter. I don't see if it's, it doesn't say their name necessary. Oh, Jules, sorry. Hey, Jules, I see it now. And this is entitled, A Series of Unfortunate Mishaps and MacGyver Escapes. Jeez, I'm in. I'm excited. In for a penny, in for a pound. We're Let's ready. Let's do this. It says, hey, Sean and Katie, it's me, your Northern UK writer, Jules. I have meant to write in for some of my funny stories, so here goes. Okay. A series of unfortunate mishaps and MacGyver escapes. Okay. Number one, camping toilet. <laughs> okay. The first series of unfortunate mishaps begins with a family holiday and my three-year-old initiation in campsite toilets. In my typical independent flair, I went alone and locked the door. Of course, you're going to the bathroom. You need privacy. Yep. Good old Rusty. The lock got stuck. <sighs> My mom had to try to coach me to crawl under the door. Uh, oh, no. I mean, as a kid, if it was high enough, you know, as kids, you do that stuff all the time, which still. as an adult, I'm like, that's fucking disgusting. But as a kid, I would climb in and out of those things all the time. Really? Yeah. You'd sneak over and sh- scare your friend next door. Hey, boo. <laughs> 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 Didn't expect me here, did you? Who? Oh, oh, pop up. <laughs> oh. And we'd like tuck up on the toilet so people would look to see if anybody's in there. And the opening would be like, boo, you're just toilets, toilet mist. Toilet games. Toilet games. <laughs> okay, so she eventually escaped. Little did I know that this would become a series. Moving on to number two midnight lockdown in a lift. Okay. So, lift in the UK, for those of you who don't know, is a elevator. A taxi. No, an elevator. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
It's a building taxi. <laughs> building taxi. It's a, a taxi between floors. At 20 years old, I was working as an elderly carer in a large 50 bed mansion. Holy moly. With three floors and two lifts. Holy moly. Night shifts were my main thing as a student. I had a laundry trolley in the lift around midnight and then clunk. The lift door wouldn't open. It was stuck between two floors. My colleagues called the contractor engineer, but he was at the other side of London over two hours away. Oh no. Oh no. And no one else could be called. After about an hour, my colleagues were worried and they proceeded to stick two straws together and poke one end through the gap in the lift door so that I could get a drink. Oh, that's oh nice that was them. so nice. Smart, Look smart. at them. Yeah, because I was like, I'd be worried you have to go pee or you're hungry or thirsty. So that I was really. Pee through that tube. Yes, yeah, give it, send it back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the drink. Hold I on take, a second. I got to. I take it out. I send it back. <laughs> <laughs> About two and a half hours later, I was rescued and finished my shift and still got paid for the full shift. Well, you know, it's not like they're going to. Hey, maybe next time you should initiate they, this. They slide stuff. your time card through the doors. Could you just sign that just you weren't working? Out. You're stuck in the lift. Thank goodness there was just a, a, oh, that it was just a bedding trolley and not a resident. Yeah, right? Like oh, you didn't yeah. have like, someone you're trying to care for. That would have been it was so much worse. Okay. Number three. Yes. MacGyver escape from a second floor bathroom. Oh. This sounds exciting. It was one sat, uh, Sunday morning. I was on kids club duty at church. So I got up super early around 8 a.m. to get ready. I showered. So I locked the bathroom door. My flatmate was away and I lived on the second floor apartment. As I went to open the bathroom door, I, it got stuck and the part of it broke onto the other side. So she was locked into the bathroom. A flash of scenes from my good old MacGyver sparked in my mind. I had to act quickly. I climbed in the bathtub to reach the window. Okay. I looked out there and there was no one around. So I just started shouting, hello, <laughs> hello, is hey, anyone there? Hello. Eventually, someone walked past. They walked past the courtyard entrance and I got their attention and asked if they could knock on a neighbor's door and ask them for a screwdriver. Now bear in mind, I was locked in my bathroom and my front door was locked. Thankfully, my elderly neighbors were home and awake. They got a screwdriver and I had them I had to ask them to throw it up to the second floor while I attempted to catch it. After a few attempts, attempts, it worked. Screwdriver in hand and MacGyver's great escape scenes. As a guide, I unscrewed the handle, then used a screwdriver to turn the interlock ah. and click, click, click. Success. It worked. Well I was done. finally free and I still made it to church. Good job, Look Jules. at that. Look at that, Jules. Handy dandy. The devil of a doorknob did not do any mm -mm. damage. You uh -uh, not today, dutifully Satan. drove to I'm trying to do all these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the church. <laughs> <laughs> to the disciples. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I'm impressed. Number four. Yes. How a tiny toilet nearly became a tiny home. <laughs> what? Okay. So I was dog sitting at my old family home when my while my parents were away. One day, I went to use the tiny utility toilet near the back door. And as I closed the door, what happened next was like scenes from a chiller movie. There was okay. a clean clang, bang, as the vacuum tube knocked over the standing room, crisscrossed over me, blocking me in the teeny tiny toilet. I tried to push the door. Nothing because of the weight of the vacuum cleaner. So when she shut it, it, like, it locked her in, in this teeny tiny toilet room. At least there was a teeny tiny sink for water. I had to think. There weren't many options, but there was an old, old thick glass window panel in the door, but it had been there for like 40 years. I found some scissors and was able to pry the metal clasps from around the glass panel. Jules is pretty good. She's pretty industrious. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed. Yeah, she was a thinker. Yeah, right? MacGyver. And carefully, gently lifted the panel from the frame, hoping it wouldn't slip and smash and there wasn't much room, but I had to gently lower the glass down safely. Now I had to reach the broom and lever it under the vacuum tube to remove it away from the door so she uh, could like release herself because it could like lock her in. Yeah. After a few attempts, success again. I was able to escape, escape. I could not have made this happen again if I tried. <laughs> Those are some great stories. Well, also she has lots of accidents of, with toilets. Yeah, is that the end of Jules's? I think so. I didn't see anything else. Yes. I yeah. think, and I could be wrong, mm -hmm. but 
this is spooky season. I think she's being haunted by a shitty ghost. A <laughs> shitty ghost. <laughs> All about the shits. Yeah. And, and I when think he goes that, and gets coffee, orders a kitty cat splitty splash. Yeah. This, or split I, splat. Or I don't know what you <laughs> A double split splat. Mm-hmm. But it seems to me that you're haunted. By toilets. By That's toilets true. and small spaces. Toilet, elevators. The toilets you have toilets a, past. a mischievous spirit that is haunting you. Mm-hmm. You have a hair on your tooth. No. Oh. I'm, I'm haunted by a hair. It's one of your whisker to whisker hairs. Do you feel it? Yep. <laughs> Kitty cat hair. Kitty cat splitty splat. <laughs> uh, you're ruining the story, Katie. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Jules is haunted by a, a, a malevolent spirit. Mm. Malevolent because they, they, they put them in a shitty situation. <laughs> Sometimes it's the bathroom. Tight Sometimes spaces. it's. Yeah. Because, no, did you notice there's never anyone around, but she hears a click clack. Tip tap, click clack. And boom, a vacuum is on the other side of the door. Clunk, the door handle mm-hmm. falls off. Mm-hmm. I think so you have. So she said it's like one of those good, like the thriller movies. Yeah, I think you have a, uh, a haunting. Uh, like a grade three out of five, uh, a grade, maybe three out of seven. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't sound like it's that bad of a. Well, also, she's really good at getting out of the situations. I'm going to recommend you get a smudge stick. <laughs> Smudge it out. And say the following the smudgeness. words. Mm, okay. Mm. Uh, Those aren't words. But that's how you start the song. Oh, then you get okay. into the words. Okay. Some weird Catholic sound first. Uh, on the bus. Off the bus. Uh, that's it. Well, she smudges. Padre Fili, Fili Timmy and Steve. <laughs> Uh, yeah that's if that doesn't work we'll we'll get a little bit more advanced but you that's some how, very strange tactics well you have to you know tell the spirit hey i mean business but you don't want to be too aggressive it should rhyme but you that okay listen <laughs> who grew up a catholic <laughs> not me <laughs> neither <laughs> but i was an altar boy a couple of times and Church. that was pretty good that was pretty good. Uh, yeah. You know, we got so you out of smud- class and stuff. So I kind of remember how it went, but it's very foggy. <laughs> and I've watched a lot of horror movies where there's, <laughs> where there's uh, you know. Um, Just call a priest and have them do it. It's expensive. Oh, and it? a lot of them don't have very good Yelp reviews. Mm, that's so nice. that's maybe rough. we could have the mysterious priest that Graham knows. Or maybe Father Zbirk does a. Oh, he could. Yeah. Do like maybe a, he has some, uh, some what would it, what's exorcism. It called? Exorcism. Uh, but it's French, so it's hexorcism. <laughs> You heard it here first. <laughs> All right, Jules. Well, listen, I, I think you're crafty. You're smart. You get Giver yourself sure. out. I bet you that you, the way you get out of these situations is just the tip of the iceberg. I bet you throughout your life, you're a very uh, smart person who whenever you encounter something, you get out of it right away or you find your way around it. She's or, industrious. She's resourceful. Yeah. She'll figure it out, man. Yep, exactly. So I'm when sure. something befalls her, think quick, MacGyver. Mm-hmm. Think what like, would MacGyver do? What would w- WWMD. Yeah. MGD. Oh. MacGyver. MacGyver? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't <laughs> do we have time for one more letter? Oh, I got a paper clip. I've got a piece of gum mm. and a booger. Oh, I'm going to mm. make a fishing lure. Got it. Got it. <laughs> I don't know. Do we have time for one more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. One more. One more. How are we doing on time? We are at the one out. Well, we, yeah, we're, we're, we're right there. We'll okay. make it quick. Okay. So this is from Ben. Hey, hey Ben. How's yeah. it going, buddy? Is he our technology person? What's He's our space scientist. Space. He is our electrician. He is uh, our ham radio operator. All things related to. He's in- our hamigo. Oh, hamigo. Okay. He's been to Hamsterdam. Mm, so much ham. Entitled, How a Mouse Saved Me from Catching COVID-19. Oh, I'm intrigued. Gotta love a mouse. You know, huh. the mice, I, not to drag you this podcast. You cut me off right like, when I was getting into I it. I know, but you know, the mice are uh, in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah. You have the dolphins, you have the mice. I've never the, read that book. I think I told you. What? <laughs> I read part of it, but it was in this time in my life. Was that a freshman year of college or oh, senior yeah, of high school? For this I had like six other books that I was reading <laughs> and I was just like, I'm just going to skim this one. In the hierarchy of sentient beings uh-huh. on the planet Earth. Mm-hmm. Aren't mice at the top? Mice, dolphins, humans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why the mouse. Yeah. The mouse didn't poop in his bread. It saved him from catching COVID-19. Mice are smart. Hey, 
It says, hey, Katie and Sean, in the fight against COVID-19, I had an unusual ally. On December 30th, my wife and I worked up, oh, woke up at about 4 a.m. Yeah. to some scratching noises coming from inside the wall of our bedroom. <laughs> it seems we had a rat. My wife, being really freaked out, decided to sleep in another room. I totally understand. Until we could have pest control come to take care of the problem. I, being stubborn, decided that I wasn't going to give up my bed. After all, the sounds were from inside the wall. And the wall was secure. A few days later, my wife tested positive for COVID-19. Mm. Despite being tested for both the virus and the antibodies, I never ended up with any sign of having the disease because he was stubborn. I can only assume that the fact that my wife and I were sleeping in different bedrooms was somehow enough to protect me from catching COVID-19. I would assume that too. Now that I'm vaccinated, I'm much less worried about it as a whole, but it is kind of nice to think of the mouse that saved me from catching the disease. On some note, the sound stopped after two days and never returned. This was a few weeks before pest control came. Because of the household being positive for COVID-19, no idea what actually <laughs> what actually happened there, but I do know it ended up saving me from COVID. So we never found the mouse. So. Well, this mouse is busy. Clearly yeah. very smart, going from house to house, alerting people. COVID. 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 I feel eh, eh, sick. Don't go out. It's like a canary in a coal mine, but it's a mouse in a wall. <laughs> uh, kind of like Paul Revere. It's mm -hmm. the Paul Revere of mice in a wall, mm -hmm. sounding the alarm. The British are coming. Isn't that funny, though, how some people will get it and some people won't? Because Larry, so that my family had a wedding a couple weeks ago, probably a month ago, I guess, at this point. Um, and Larry caught COVID and tested positive. And we still think we know who gave it to him, but they won't fess up to it because they won't get tested. But there should be inquisitions in families. <laughs> well, you know, when people Do you go, deny that people, you had a cough and you went to the public gathering? Rude. <laughs> You claimed it was a cold. That's what they said. Yet. I think I just caught a cold and people are like, you can't do that nowadays. Like, uh. Anyway, but everybody's okay. Don't worry, you guys. But anyway, Larry caught it and it's been pretty mild because him and my mom are both vaccinated and so they didn't have really intense symptoms. Also, Larry just has like a, a really strong Cast constitution. Times. He just like doesn't, nothing really like jostles him too much. I've only seen him get sick like once. And even then pretty mild he'll go and build a deck outside or something yeah while he's like coughing yeah but anyway and then my mom started Sturdy feeling like she stock. she thought it was her allergies acting up because he had tested positive she went to get tested and hers came back negative but she still is like i think I, I think i've got it you know but so they're like quarantining all this stuff but um it's crazy when like some people get it and some people don't because then at the wedding like my brother and his wife talked to my mom and larry like a lot and then neither of them got it so it's just weird you just never know. There's probably and then you a couple of say, mice at the wedding. Thank you, body. <gasps> Immune system. Yeah. <gasps> ha. <laughs> yeah. That's imagine my leg kicking out. And it says, not today, Satan. That's it. Just shoves it down. That's what it does. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I do. I Sometimes know. I'm really proud of my immune system. Yeah. Like we, we have to be, you know, get that thing revved up. Yeah. That's your best defense against COVID. That's why it's that good to mouse. sometimes eat half a cake pop off the back, the kitchen floor. Yes. You got to, you got to, a spoonful of medicine makes the bacteria go down. And in this case, a, a bit of sugar from the floor and the dog paws <laughs> and the bacteria does I'm sure a good sure even as talking about this, you're like, shouldn't I? A little tummy dance and my flora and fauna in my tummy. <laughs> Is strong like ox. <laughs> yeah, you mix a little garbage in with the good. Sean's and mixing up a lot of different things. Right <laughs> I do my internet researches. I know what's up. I know how to stay healthy. You do the metformin. You get the splattery uh, <laughs> cola guards. Okay, listen, we got to get out of here. It's uh, the two hour mark. Oh, okay. We love you all. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Do something fun, share a fun story with us, share some fun colloquialisms. You have your marching orders. Get to busy. OTDM. Get to busy. What the fuck is that? <laughs> OTDMBot at gmail.com. Sean's brain needs a break. We'll uh, give him a break. I ran out of coffee. <laughs> okay. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Get to busy. Get <laughs>